24th. I'm one of your hosts, Night Swarm, and with me, as always, Filter Cord. How's it going? It is going, man. And we do have a guest, too. Uh, from the E3 2019 show floor, we have Drake. How's it going, man? Going good, yeah. I'm making my, uh, my annual return to this podcast to uh, give my E3 impressions. You know, uh, we always say, like, we, we need to have you more involved. Yeah, I I would love to be, and I I feel like we always mean that when we say it. Uh, and then it just Definitely. just things get busy. Um, yeah. especially over here, like I, I'm gonna I'll take the responsibility for not being on more. Uh, I uh, it's just you know, sleeping hectic. Uh, I'm always in LA, always jumping from one like contract job or temporary job to the other. So I spend a, a good portion of my time just like you know hitting up networking events and you know applying to different things and like jumping from from event to event uh and so it's uh so it's hectic for me but i'm gonna i'm gonna make a late new year's resolution i'm gonna make an effort <laughs> in the you know in the 20 2019 2020 season uh between the c3 and next to to appear more often so definitely yeah i mean we're here every sunday so you know cool. anytime yeah. that you have something you want to talk about uh cool. you know our soapbox is yours so awesome i appreciate sure. that so much yeah all right, so um, it, th- this show is a little different, but uh, you know I think we're trying to make it as like typical as possible. So why don't we jump into uh, what we've all been playing? Uh, Filter cord, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with you, like usual, or sure? Uh, yeah, we'll do me, you, and then Drake, and then Drake cool. can take that opportunity to roll right into uh, what he saw at um, you know E three and kind of the surrounding timetable around there. Um, cool. So yeah, cool. I've been. Uh, Digging into the backlog, like I always do. Uh, naturally, <laughs> I did not finish uh, Quantum Break. I'm just rolling right to the next thing. <laughs> yeah? The game can so, only be like eight hours. What do you mean you didn't finish it? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's like three hours if you cut out all the videos. But uh, and, only, and only play half of it. <laughs> you can only play full. Yeah, in my case, it was about an hour and a half. So, uh, yeah. I've uh, dug back into... Uh, actually, my first time playing it, but, uh, you know... Ancient uh, Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines, the original. Um, Dope. Is that only on PC? It is only on PC. Okay. Although I recall seeing physical copies on the original Xbox, but apparently that never oh. existed. So apparently I'm on drugs. I didn't know that game was that old. Uh, it's just old. <laughs> it's what 2004. Damn. Whoa. Originally, yeah. And it's oh. it's kind of funny. I think actually it might have been delayed once. So this trailer is hilarious. That. Uh, I, I found like an original trailer for it. It's just like the way wow. that you marketed shit back then was insane. But yeah, this actually came out after Half Life Two uh, in the same year. And in fact, it was a so they made a Vampire the Masquerade colon Bloodlines. Um, <laughs> they made it in the Source Engine, so oh. they were actually contractually obligated while using the Source Engine. They had to let Half Life Two come out and not compete against it. Which is pretty funny. What? Yeah, yeah that's so crazy. Like, like Valve was like, "Well, we don't want you to like hurt our game." Which I would argue that they're two completely different things. But yeah, and that's whatever. so crazy. So like, their their engines open source, but then they can tell people what they can and can't release. Well, on no, it? I mean it's called source. It's it's closed engine. They control it completely. Oh, it's really? I, I always I always thought uh, that that engine was open source. They they opened it later. Oh, okay. um, as like part of Steam, and that's why like. All of the, like, um, I don't know, the shit in Steam that you... It's not mods, but, like, the community workshop creations are all made with Source Engine. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Steam, okay. I mean, if you make a game with Source, I think you still owe... You have to release it on Steam. And uh, I believe they still own a chunk of it. Mm-hmm. They, they own something about it. I can't remember what it is. But, yeah, I mean, the game's actually, like, for a 2004-2005 game, it holds up extremely well. Um, the it's first person. Um, it, it doesn't really like, uh, it, it kind of reminds me of like nice old Republic where they've like, they've nailed the setting. They've nailed like, I don't know, characterization. Like the role playing is really good in it. Um, the conversations are really good. Uh, the kind of quests are interesting from what I've seen so far. I'm still pretty early, but, um, you know, there's not like, Hey, walk over to this building and say hello, and then walk back and then tell me that you went and said hello, and then walk back again. <laughs> like it's the the quests actually have something going on. Um, there's like a lot of unique ways to play. So 
Like we see the kind of Nosferatu, like ugly vampires. If you're playing as them, people will just instantly freak out at the sight of you. So you have to like traverse the whole game in the sewers and not be seen by people ever. Whoa. Which is like other than other vampires. So that like completely changes how the game is played. Um, There's a lot of mods out there for it at this point. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm super good... excited for Bloodlines too. Yeah, um, it looks amazing. Yeah. It is uh, like what's what's the goal of the game? I know because I know it's like your the masquerade is like being a vampire. No, no one's supposed to know you're a vampire. Like that's the masquerade. Right. But like, what is? Because uh, it's from an old paper and pencil, like mm-hmm. paper and pen RPG. Yeah. Right? So the uh, so basically the original company that made these White Wolf had like a whole universe. So. Um, it's world of darkness is the setting which is basically like it's like a modern setting uh depending on like what era you played in i guess um you know started in like the 80s so it was semi-modern um except there are like evil things in the world so there are monsters there are werewolves there are ghosts things like that and then they have separate books that you know people were like hey the vampires are really cool so they're like oh okay what if you just played a game as a vampire so they made the vampire the masquerade. The the masquerade is the, uh, like you said, it's their kind of, um, I mean, it's an organized thing where like the vampires got together and decided like, we are going to have a masquerade where we do not allow people to realize they're vampires because then they're going to try to kill us. So it's just much right. easier if the cows don't know that they're in the butcher shop. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, so I mean, is it is it a is it like a super in depth RPG? Like, is this like a cyberpunk or a, yeah? I mean, like it's, Deus it's type of thing. I mean, we did right. see it's, some of those. It's very similar to a Deus Exy kind of vibe, where it is like you can make a, a tough. Um, I think it's the like the Bruja clan, where like you are like combat focused. You have a lot of you know, you higher speed, higher senses, higher strength. And uh, you can instead build, like, I have a very charisma-focused character that's, like, a sort of, like, the aristocratic clan of vampires. There's, like, the, you can be stealth-focused, you can be magic, a magic user. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. So it is a really in-depth RPG. Um, basically, in this first game, you were, like, you're made into a vampire, and then you're it turns out that your maker did not have like did not request permission to make a child vampire. So uh, you get picked up by like the vampire government and they like execute your creator. And typically they kill the like child vampire too. But in this case, they're like, actually like you seem to be picking things up. Like we're going to let you survive and you will basically live. uh, Like you'll take the place of your parent that we just had to kill for like breaking the law, but you didn't do anything wrong. So we're going to let you live. And, um, like you, the, the game is like, you get sent to do some missions for your clan and they're like, we, we need to know that we can trust you. So go do a couple things for us and meet some of our agents and kind of figure yourself out. And then we'll use you more later on. And, uh, bloodlines two, um, is not a direct sequel, but it is running off the same world basically. Right. Um, so in, in bloodlines two, basically there was an event. So like when you get turned into a vampire, it's called an embrace. So like you're embraced, like literally you're grabbed and like your blood is sucked out. And then also you're like brought into the family basically. Um, so what happens in, before you start playing in bloodlines two is that there's a mass embrace where basically some vampires went and just created a ton of children and they're not supposed to do that. That's not allowed. And nobody is taking credit for, like, who did it. So it's, like, it's... Uh, the second game is going to have, like, a big mystery where you're, like, okay, who even created me? Like, why am I... Why do I exist? Why do these other people exist? And then, like, because there was this mass embrace, there's a bunch of vampires that do not have any leadership. And they don't know what they are, possibly. They don't know what they're doing. And they have a chance to blow the whole masquerade, so... That's so cool. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's really fascinating. Like, the... Just the central idea of, like, a stealth RPG, sort of. That, like, yeah. you know what you are, and some people that you run into in the world know what you are, but you don't know if they're supposed to know. So, That's like, so there's cool. some people that you communicate with where you're like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm the guy. And they're like, you're the guy? And you're like, uh, are we expecting a guy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, 
you know, they might think you're like here to like move some heroin in your asshole and you're trying to <laughs> fucking suck blood out of somebody. So yeah, if you blow the masquerade, you have to kill them. Like you you're just like if someone finds well, out. Well, so a like vampires like, can. So like things will appear in the news. So it's like people will know that you're doing shit bad and you can you're allowed to like if you kill a couple people or if you're witnessed by a few people the like the vampire government can handle it they're called the uh, the camarilla um cool. they can handle it but like if you're just like fucking running through downtown with your fucking vampire dick out and like <laughs> slaying people and like shooting blood magic out of your ass everywhere like they will actually actively turn against you and consider you a threat and they'll annihilate you wow so that's like a challenge so like i said the uh, the nosferatu so vampires cool. was like a big challenge mode where you can't ever be seen because you automatically blow the masquerade because you're ugly as fuck <laughs> um i mean that also goes for like another challenge mode is just immediately piss off the camarilla and have them like have a, your number and try to execute you basically Dude, fucking excommunicado. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, I'm really into the world. I had one of the source books a long time ago, but I never played it on the tabletop. I never really got into it. But there's a new version. Um, they're owned by Paradox now. Yep. Um, which, like, you know, they have a really good pedigree of strategy. Yeah, they've, shit, been, so. they've been killing it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I definitely want to dig in more. I don't think I'll, like, 100% like, conquer this game the way I did with, like, Knights Old Republic or Dragon Age or anything like that. But I'm really excited for the second one and I want to kind of put myself on a good position to go into that one. Cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It sounds super good. Like, I'm really interested to see what the gameplay is going to, like, your standard gameplay is going to feel mm -hmm. like. Yeah, it was a little, um, like, from the gameplay demo that I saw, especially from. Uh, the game was uh, third person. The first game was third person, right? Well, the, the it changes perspective. It's usually first person, and then when you go into combat in the first game, it goes third. Because uh, melee combat, it goes third person. If you're doing, like, guns, it stays in first person. Okay. Um, and then certain moves that you do will make it go third person. Um, so, like, stunts or, like, that's, if you're doing a flip. <laughs> yeah, that's really different, though. Like, there's yeah. not a lot that's... It's interesting. So... That was sort of common at the time, but... Um, only in like it was typically in shooters. Like when you had to do something physically, like melee, it would zoom out so you could see your territory a little better. But uh, certainly not a common. It, that doesn't really happen anymore very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think cool. they did an amazing job, and it bankrupted the fucking developer that made it at the time. So it's pretty funny. Yeah, right, that's crazy. It has a really good like. It sounds like it has a really good story, and it has like a mm -hmm. lot of good ideas. So yeah, big yeah, cult hit. It's interesting that it, uh, you know, kind of went that oh, way. And it's cool. It I, I, out, I mean, like, where did it, box. like, how did it come, like, I would like to hear why, like, why and how they're like, you know what? Now's the time. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you mean for two? Yeah. 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 I think it's just because of the acquisition and the new version of the RPG came out. It also just feels like it's time. Like, I feel like back in 2004, a game like that is probably like limited in a lot of ways from like what they really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah. now, like, the tech is just caught up and there's just, there's so much more you can do. And that's such a cool idea. So it's like, why not try it again with, you know, yeah. all these advancements in AI make the game bigger? I wonder if they had to wait for like vamp, like, like vampires were really big for, you know, a number of years there. Mm -hmm. I wonder they if they wait waited for, for that. Down. I wonder if they waited for that to die down, like as possible. well. I don't know. Well, there was a lot of, and it's kind of weird too because this is, comes right on the heels of uh, Vampire. Yes, which is like did it pretty well, but I think you, there's a lot of really smart lessons to learn from what they did. Yeah, I, I think um, I think this game, if they were comparing themselves, their biggest thing would be let's make that combat better. Well, let's make the action really good, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, this, this seems like that's what they're working on. So, um, it, you know, big open world, first person traversal and everything. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. This uh, one comes out, what is it, like uh, March or something or May? I think yeah, it's March. 3 2020, something like that. Yeah. Dude, um, next, the first half of next year is the most gonna be fucking insane. Wild. It's, dude, yeah. 2020 will go down as the best year in video games of all time, period. No question. <laughs> period. We're getting so big. All these crazy games, and then at the end of the year, we're going to get brand new companies. And like because of like yeah. the precedence that the Switch set, I think these new consoles are actually going to launch with like killer apps. Like we already know the Xbox is launching of Halo, and like I would put money down that Horizon Zero. Last of Us Two. 
or no, no, or Last of Us Two is coming out way. It's coming out in February. Don't don't even. It's way before. <laughs> I have PS5. not seen a fucking gameplay trailer, so I will hold my fucking breath on that. <laughs> there is absolutely a gameplay trailer. It was last year at E3. Yeah. I mean, a real gameplay trailer that a dude played at a booth. I mean, it's. That I mean, said, it's, we are gonna see. Uh, we are gonna see the this year's Cyberpunk gameplay demo. Uh, yeah. In uh, what next month? Uh, it's after not Gamescom, but whatever the next one is. I saw it already. But we can talk Son about of that a later. bitch, greasy um, bastard. But I mean, like, uh, Lost right. War 2 will come out well before the PS5. But I think Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is coming out as launch title for the PS5. Yeah, that probably so. would be true. So yeah. we're just so, going like, to cut off everything we're talking about now and let's just dive right into that cyberpunk. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, like, next year is insane. Yeah. And, like, Bloodlines 2, like, just adds to that. It's just stacking on games, man. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah and it's, like, it's a good mix of AAA sort of double a i guess which i would consider uh the vampire game uh you know it, I, I would not say that paradox is equal to like ea or activision or something they're they're just a little bit lower tier right but sure. you know they they nail that fucking content i mean people still play fucking crusader kings that came out in 2010 or 11 or whatever um yeah the other thing uh the other thing i checked out which I'm sure there's some uh, feelings on on the internet. Uh, Harry Potter Wizards Unite, the basically Harry Potter Go from. Oh, I'm so excited to hear about this. Mm -hmm. It's. uh, Did you play the. um, Well, there's been a lot of these like AR style games now. Yeah, we had like like a Jurassic Park and. Yeah, the Jurassic Park one was probably the best, most intelligently made one. (laughs) I didn't even hear about that one. Yeah, nobody did. There was a Ghostbusters one. Yeah, there's yeah, a there Ghostbusters was, there was one I heard a, is good. Quite a few of them, yeah. The, How's this Harry Potter one? I, it's currently extremely feature light. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, all you're doing right now is drawing the symbols from the Harry Potter uh, Hogwarts mystery game over things mm-hmm. that appear in the environment. So, like, you'll be walking around and, like, a little token will appear on your map. And it's the same, very similar to the Pokemon Go map. And in fact, the mm-hmm. same the same uh, stations or like stops or whatever you call them. Yeah, they're um, usually, st- the spots. landmarks are still the same, yeah. Right. right. So, um, you know, you're just walking around, a little token will pop up, you tap the token, and then you, I have turned off the AR mode because I find that shit annoying. Me too. But um, you will like locate something in your environment, which is... Like, uh, you know, the little blue pixies from the second Harry Potter movie, like Mm -hmm. they will be flying around like a clock or something. And like you have to cast uh, a spell that will either knock them out or trap them or make them fall asleep or whatever. So like um, you'll just draw a symbol on the screen and then how fast you draw the symbol and how close you draw it to the outline will give it some kind of score that you don't i mean you see good fair poor or great or perfect i guess i haven't seen that but um you know it gives you some rating that's not really numbers based and then the thing goes away and you get a sticker and you go do that more that's everything i've seen in the game so far okay i mean i've i've played it i've played it a bit i've actually been meaning to like reach out and be like hey this is my code or whatever um, like I played quite a bit because I was, you know, out and about the mm-hmm. last few days. Um, so and, and there's you know a ton of spots here, yeah. and I, I mean it's it's fine. Like the uh, obviously the um, items that you're trying to uh, what do they call them? Like, confundables. They're basically yeah. your Pokemon. Yeah. And you're trying to place them on a like registry. Mm-hmm. And and reg- and sometimes it'll be like, you know, you find like in the beginning you find Hagrid, and yeah. you, you can place basically like you said a sticker of Hagrid on this registry, um, and there's a ton of different houses and uh, or not houses like uh, like styles. There's like yeah, each, care for creatures, so each dark arts. Page of the registry has like maybe like between four and eight sticker slots on it, and uh, they're all based on what. So, like, yeah, uh, Hagrid is in, like, the Care of Magical Creatures set or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, on his same page, there's, like, a hippogriff, a cabbage patch, uh, you know, an angry cloud, and a fucking dude stick or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... Um, I don't remember that one in the Harry Potter movies. It was uh, there. You haven't seen the... Uh, Real low-key, but it was there. It's there. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so it's, I don't know, it's, I, I think, uh, it, just to start, like, they didn't really learn their lessons from Pokemon Go. So, like, again, they've made the friend code thing, rather than having it bound to your Google account or Facebook, you have to go type in your friend code. Your friends, to get it. damn code. Yeah. Um, you can't, they did not include the QR code to add your friends, which is like, okay, dog, if you just made this for the other thing and people were bitching and moaning about it until you added it, why would you not just add it from the start? Right. I mean, it's, they've made some very weird decisions with it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, it to me, it's, it's like, I'm like, it's fine. You know, it, it's not great, but it's fine. Um, my biggest fucking complaint, and I don't know about you or how much you've really played, um, mm-hmm. when you're going to cast a spell, no matter how good I end up doing it, it never goes past good. I've gotten a great. I've never got a fucking great. And I've been, like, right on top of it, like, perfectly. Like, well, I've seen Ashley said, it, uh, and I've noticed that it wants your speed. Um, it depletes the bar as you're drawing. So even if you get it perfectly outlined, uh, if it takes you too long it'll drain your bar too much for you to get very much points back okay interesting. so like you have to just whip that bitch out as fast as you can like i always crank out a nut right before work yep it's Zach not saying, smart to go out with a fully <laughs> loaded gun <laughs> as you know? fast as possible you don't want one in the chamber is what i'm saying yeah never know what might happen smart. Smart. so um you know it's it's uh like if this would have come out before um pokemon go, pokemon go it'd be awesome but <laughs> It came out after. It does not include the features that Pokemon Go has, which is odd. Like, why would you... I understand there's certain things like, okay, trading, this is probably not really going to work in this, right? Right. But they just didn't include some basic quality of life shit to begin with, and there appears to be no... Like, not even to say end game. Like, the, the whole game, you experience everything that the game has to offer in five minutes. Mm-hmm. And you just keep doing that forever. You know what I mean? It's pretty odd. Yeah, but the, uh, Niantic just seems incapable of learning from their own mistakes. I kind of felt that way about Pokemon Go, but yeah, you're right. It's very it's, true. Pokemon we've, Go. we've had years of advancements in Pokemon Go, and it's just, yeah. especially if this is also made by Niantic, it's so weird for them not to just like include the stuff that they already have in their other game. Yeah, well, it, it's like they. To me, it's almost like they left off. Like they just picked up with this game right where Pokemon Go kind of left off. Mm-hmm. Like. It's like they didn't learn from anything by any means, and they didn't incorporate anything like new or crazy like they probably should have been developing this whole time. But it's like Pokemon Go started here, and now it's here. All right, Hogwarts Mysteries kind of leaves off right there, and mm-hmm. you know we'll see where it goes from here. It's it, it, it's kind of a weird feeling, but very weird. Yeah, I think it's I'll, okay. I'll probably skip it. I, I, mean, I mean, I I I haven't played Pokemon Go since two weeks after it launched. So I mean, if you're yeah. a big Harry Potter fan, it's probably like super amazing. Like, right. I I, I really I really like Harry Potter. I'm not the like end all be all Harry Potter fan. Like, but yeah, I don't know. I could see how people could be super stoked about it if they lived in a you know a bigger place. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I've also uh, I've also been playing that obviously quite a bit just trying to get that information um anything else is that pretty much that's what i've been doing i mean I, i've been kind of dipping my toes in a couple things but uh nothing else really uh not i haven't been sticking to anything else other than those okay yeah uh personally i am now, now i'm one trophy away from uh platinum in borderlands again again <laughs> for the second time yeah. uh and I, I kind of got screwed. I had to go back, and it took me probably like six hours. Do you remember yeah. that that issue that we had with uh, Grim and those missions uh, not syncing yeah, the, up like, properly? The unavailability thing. Yeah, it, it ruined me getting the trophy. Um, mm-hmm. So I had to go back and do all of the stuff in the Arid Badlands all over again. Yeah, the mission was complete that I needed to be complete, but it didn't register that it was complete because of that unsyncing problem I had. Yeah. That's an issue. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's been... Eh, it's been fun. Uh, Borderlands is really fun, and I'm, you know, pretty... Uh, pretty excited to see more um, <clears throat> from Borderlands 3. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I want to see more from Borderlands 3 as we get closer, but I can't wait to play Borderlands. Yeah. Um... <laughs> 
Aside from that, picked up uh, my friend Pedro. Nice. And yeah, I also played that, for that the first time. very briefly. It looks so fun. It it, it is, um, but exactly what you see in the game is. I mean, that's that's the whole game. There's nothing more. Uh, I mean, you're not gonna be surprised uh, by like anything in the game. So I mean, and that's not a bad thing. I, I don't think because the game is. It looks amazing, but. Um, yeah, it feels like a game that I've kind of played before. <laughs> mm-hmm. And again, that's not like a bad thing. It's uh, it's it's been it was extremely fun to play through. Like, and it's not it's one of those games that it's not crazy long, so it doesn't feel like you're taking, you know, forever to play, um, mm-hmm. like play through or whatever. So, um, but yeah, it has kind of like a like a pretty decent little story that it's walking you through uh you know and anything that has like bullet ballet on a skateboard that's kind of my jam so (laughs) there's nothing more nothing more to be said about that but interesting uh, subgenre yeah yeah. yes something i didn't know that i I wanted um yeah of the things that they've done like i i played basically uh i played through until i like actually died for the first time mm-hmm. like died died <laughs> um and it's it's kind of like um I, what they're doing they do like extremely right like the stuff that they're really into so like the the gunplay is amazing um the kind of slow-mo like bullet time type stuff they do extremely well um the this the stuff that's kind of weird like the controls are really hard in my opinion to like it's really hard to utilize your full kit because um i just think the bindings are really weird um i would have rearranged a lot of the controls and i'm actually going to be looking into i have it on switch so i didn't even i don't know if it's even possible to alter the control scheme on the switch but i'm gonna be messing around with that yeah that's where that's where i played it as well yeah so it's I don't know. Some of the, I mean, for what it is, just looking at the game as it is, it's, you know, relatively small team. It is a, um, a Devolver Digital mm-hmm. style game, and it very much plays like it is. So, as far as that goes, I think they're they've done about as good as it's going to be possible to do. And, and you know, that's what I really like about Devolver Digital. You know, mm-hmm. like you know what you're going to be getting with yeah, their you're signing games. up or something and specific it, it's usually the price point is how you mm-hmm. know what you're going to be getting with their games yeah so it's like this game like the pre-order for it or whatever on the switch dropped it to like 16 like 99 16, it's normally 20 yeah and i was like yeah. okay i know what kind of like length i'm gonna get out of this i know what you know what like what it's gonna feel like and yeah. i i definitely wasn't surprised by it but um i mean i'm gonna get more out of it obviously by playing um like going back and like they kind of want you to go back and like up your score not just beat the mm-hmm. level but beat it uh with some like grace you know right right because they give you like multipliers for being cool basically yeah yeah so doing cool shit like yeah. shooting a guy with a shotgun and blasting him to bits and then kicking that torso from his body at his friend in the corner yeah yeah They're like that gives you massive bonuses hitting multiple targets at the same time yeah Gives you big bonuses. Um, doing like stunts with the environment gives you bonuses. So, yep, yeah, that's really cool. I, I really like it. Um, it's not a perfect game, but oh no, expect, right? yeah. It, so um, it, it feels like it definitely feels like an indie game for sure. And mm-hmm. and, that, and that's not a bad thing. I like games like that every once in a while. Yeah. And that's kind of been my theme of what I've been playing aside from Borderlands, which I haven't played since kind of the beginning. Uh, you know, I played like I think like a couple days just trying to finish up the Arid Badlands again, um, and then picked up Pedro, played through that. And I al- I also got into the um, uh, the closed beta for Rad um, nice. from was it Double Fine and it's published by Bandai Namco. Okay. Um, that game is very odd. It's kind of like a like 
you just kind of see how far you can get. And then when you die, it just kind of kicks you back to the start. And there's um, a weapon. So there's been multiple um, post-apocalyptic scenarios. And it's very comical in that typical, um, like, double-fine way. Yep. And pretty much everything's dead, and your character becomes kind of mutated. And they, like, pretty much everywhere that they walk, they bring a little bit of life back to. Mm-hmm. Um, so behind you, you'll see stuff start growing a little more lush. And there's a, a weapon that you're gifted in the beginning. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. If you die, it'll just be automatically, like, ported back here. Mm-hmm. So the next kid can use it. And the kids are the savior of that. They basically look to the, um, look to the kids to save uh, pretty much the world, I guess. And... Yeah. Um, the longer you're out in the, um, in the radiation, the more you get, um, mutated and you'll get different random abilities. Uh Uh-huh. So, like, I got a monster arm that throws, like, a boomerang. Um, I've seen, like, a snake head that attacks. There's, um, like, you can, there's, like, little, uh, like, spider eggs that you can basically shit out and you have little, like, spider minions. Um, I even got one that was, like, a huge brain on top of my character's head. And it shoots mm. side, uh, like mind bullets that control other enemies in the environment to turn them against their, you know, you can have an enemy as kind of like a friend for a little bit. Oh yeah, um, it's really cool, and it's a uh, kind of like that. It, it, it's not co- it's not top down by any means, but it, it it's pretty close. And I mean, the one complaint that I really really have about it is the way that like it might feel better if I plugged in like a controller. Mm-hmm. But using WASD to move around on this map that's fixed doesn't feel quite right. Okay, it just it feel, it's just the way your character kind of turns and yeah, yeah, it, it just feels a little odd. Um, but uh, you know, so far it's pretty fun. I've played like two small sessions of like uh, like twenty minutes each, just to mm-hmm. get the feel for it. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's fun. I'll probably have a little bit more to say uh, next week when I've played more than, you know, like, an hour worth of, like, playtime. So. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. You, that's on Steam? Is that on any consoles? Um, I'm not sure exactly where all that's coming out. I have to... I mean, let me look. Yeah. Um, I know I'm playing it on... Uh, I'm playing it on... Yeah, I am playing it on Steam. Okay. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Hmm. So that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's, uh, it is it's coming cool. in August on PS4 and Xbox One and Switch. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So uh, that's pretty much what I've been up to, aside from you know checking out uh, the Harry Potter games. So mm-hmm. cool. Uh, good stuff. What about you, Drake? What have you been playing? Um, yeah, so three three main things. Uh, I've been playing very inconsistently just because I have uh, been doing a lot of work on a variety of different projects and stuff, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to to play games. But um, I've been playing Days Gone. Uh, I've uh, been playing uh, Bloodstained uh, Ritual of the Night, uh, and nice. I've been playing Dreams. And I'll talk briefly about all three of those. Um, uh, so Days Gone. Uh, I got at launch, and I've been chipping away at little by little. Uh, it's a very long game. Um, I'll tell you, I have a huge grievance, though. Uh, it's once again continuing the uh, Sony First Party Studio track record of not including a fucking play clock, so I have no idea how long <laughs> I've been playing the game. That makes me so fucking angry. God of War didn't have it. Spider-Man didn't have it. Yeah. Red Dead didn't have it. Uh, not that that was a PlayStation exclusive, but uh, uh, and now Days Gone doesn't have it. I'm just I'm so angry right. about it. Uh, I really don't like not knowing how long I've been playing a game. Um, and uh, so I've been playing uh, for a little, probably around 30 hours, even halfway done. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of side quests. Like every time like a side thing pops up, I'll go and do that. And um, I-, I don't know if you guys, have you guys played Days Gone, Days Gone yet? No, no. no. It's something I think yeah. we've kind of all been talking about like collectively. Yeah. It's, it's good. Um, I don't, uh, it's... It's high sevens, low eights, in my opinion. Um, so far, out of what I've played, uh, I really like. Like some outlets were giving it like a five, and I just like I don't see how you arrived at that score. Like I have to, I'm gonna, I take issue with that. That's a ridiculously low score for this game. It's not a five. Um, 
it's uh it, it, but it's you know it's fun it's uh it's got like the right balance of survival elements without being like frustratingly survivally in my opinion mm-hmm. um it's you're you're constantly like you got to keep your eye out for you know for supplies and things like that but it's never like it never gets in the way of the fun of the game like you never have to like worry necessarily about breaking out your and like running through your bullets like let every okay. fight be the fight that's going to be like enjoy the the mission that you're on enjoy the fight but then after you're done you, you probably won't have much of anything left but like then you like as you journey through the world to your next like thing you stop at different like you know on the side of the road and towns and stuff and you gather up supplies again so you do run through all your supplies i've finished fights with like being out of ammo and like out of health and like packs and like all this stuff but then getting them back isn't you know a a monstrously tall hill to climb like you just you kind of get them back through normal gameplay but you still have to like you still have to stop and scavenge you can't just like drive directly to the next um uh point on the map um and so it it encourages like exploration while also not feeling too limiting which i really appreciate okay um uh, the story so far is pretty good. I'm really into it. Although story beats are pretty far and few in between just because I'm doing so much side activity. Mm-hmm. Um, my biggest complaint about the game is just how much backtracking there is. Like you revisit a lot of the same locations over and over again. You drive through the same roads a lot. The map is big, but a lot of things just happen. And there's like some focal points that a lot of things just keep happening at. And even if you're going to a new location, you're probably driving through a road that you've been on like a hundred times before to get to a different road that maybe you haven't gone down. Okay. Um, and so a lot of the game does end up feeling really familiar, especially like, like I said, I feel like I'm like 30 hours in and like, that's a long time to be going back to the same places. Uh, that being said, I haven't been to the entirety of the map. So the map also like it doles out new locations at like kind of a reserved pace so because of that a lot of things end up you t- spend a lot of time in one area and then you finally move on spend like a lot of time there uh but there's okay. other missions that bring you back to older parts of the map and stuff and um you're always discovering new locations uh so a couple things i really like about it gas is very important gasoline uh mm-hmm. and you can only travel to locations if you have enough gas to get there um so you can't use fast travel as like to circumvent the gas restrictions Mm-hmm. Other thing that I like is your health never goes back up automatically. Even resting will not replenish your health. So the only way to replenish health is to use health packs, um, which you can find like health packs. And then you can also find supplies to build your own um, health items and stuff. So um, I appreciate that, that like, you know, there's no regenerating health in this game um, because I think it really like it just it makes all the survival elements feel like more impactful and things like that because you can't just rest up or you can't just like wait in the bush for your health to go back um so there's there's an interesting amount of lore there i'm very curious about this world i'm curious about this outbreak uh i want to know about these characters i i like all the characters so far um so i i'm really digging it uh but uh yeah i I definitely it's it's unpolished which is strange from a sony first party studio game Mm -hmm. in in 2019 um and i think just just a growing pain of the studio. It comes from to us from Sony Bend, who uh, is actually a pretty old Sony studio. They made the original Siphon Filter games on the PS1. Yeah. Um, but kind of since those days, they've been making like uh, PSP and Vita games and the portable games and stuff. And so this is their first console game in a long, long time. Uh, they're using the Unreal Engine. Um, and I think it's just like the growing pains of working on such a large project for the studio. The game has a lot of really in that don't work exactly like the way that they were intended to like it's just not as refined as like those e3 demos made it seem like they're going to be and i think it's just you know it's a symptom of this basically being the studio's first game like on the scale in a long long time um and it, it probably could have done for another six months of this polish and stuff but i don't know that i think from a corporate perspective it probably wouldn't have affected the sales all that much so um, I think it was just Sony like, you know, let's, we need to put out this game in like we need to have a game out in quarter the first half of 2019 because we're not going to delay the six months and then have this compete with Death Stranding. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it was probably so I, I think it makes sense. And they've improved it a lot. Like the frame rates got a lot better, like a lot of like small glitches and stuff have really gotten patched out. So mm. um, it's I think a game worth checking out if you're on the fence about it and you're letting the review scores hold you back like fuck the review scores just like go ahead and get it you're gonna have a good time with it um and days gone two is probably gonna be super dope because they've had this foundation to build off of now yeah yeah cool yeah. 
that is kind of basically what I've heard about it. Like, okay, there's definitely some like faults here, but mm -hmm. um, like I know Grim has been playing Days Gone, had a lot of fun. Did he continue? Is he done with that yet? Or no, no, he's he's he still has it. Um, I think he's been more struggling with uh, uh, you know, some of the other games that he's been playing, like Trials of Cold Steel and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I mean, yes. he hasn't been playing this as much, but yeah, I, um, I know he was on, really on the fence about like thinking he would like would I will I enjoy this and then he mm. picked it up and um like he didn't buy it he was using like a like a rental service in the UK yeah and yeah. uh he liked it enough to like buy it after he rented it so yeah cool. that's pretty cool that's pretty yeah cool. I'll probably check it out I got I got some credit at a local uh not GameStop uh -huh. <laughs> but cool. something similar um so yeah. and, um, I mean th there's yeah. there's nothing quite like those fights like i haven't played anything in a video like that and I, I don't know if maybe if ever like i've played a lot of zombie games and stuff and these aren't exactly zombies or some interesting ways that these are distinct but you know it's zombie-esque and right. uh like those horde fights is like really emulating like the world war z type of stuff is, is mm -hmm. really really fun and so far i'm not strong enough to actually live through one of those encounters right. um right. but it's always just like gets your heart rate up like it, it requires you to use all the tools <laughs> at your disposal they're, they're really really fun and engaging um, things that like I can't point to another game that does something similar to that. So yeah, I, I really want to like because it, this is this is a game that we've talked about a little bit here and there, but it's kind of always been like we're not. <laughs> Hold on, Get my dog's freaking out. <laughs> he sees another dog outside, and he's like, "Hold on, I have to talk about Days Gone real quick." Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no, like what I really wanted to know is like like. For something like a horde, is there like a big setup phase? Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it, d does it pay off to take and set up like any sort of um, like fallback or straps. defensives? Yeah, yeah. explosives. Uh, I know we saw a little bit of that during one of the um, yeah, during one of the gameplay trailers. Yeah. Um, so, so but, yeah, so there are definitely things you can do. There's. Uh, uh, you have landmines and proximity bomb bombs, and uh, also like lures, and other sorts of traps you can set up, and like you can maybe try and plant some lures to like maybe after you initiate the horde, you can like split them off if you leave them over the like lure. Maybe some of them will like stay and investigate that while the rest come and chase you to kind of like divide and conquer. Um, but uh, I haven't done too much of that yet, just because like I just like I, I know I just don't have the equipment. Like if I run into them, it's like by accident wandering through the world. And I'm like, well, shit, I'm already in this. I might as well uh, give it a shot. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, no, they, they're they. I mean, they they behave like creatures. So they sleep during the day. They're nocturnal animals, and at night they will go out in search of food uh, and uh, water. And so mm -hmm. most of the time, their nests are around like lakes or rivers or other sources of like water. Uh, cause at night they need to go out and they need to drink, they need to eat and things like that. Um, there's also wildlife in the game and stuff too, that they'll go and hunt. Um, and so like if you're running around during the daytime, as long as you don't make too much noise, if you know that there's a horde near a horde nest nearby, just don't make too much noise. Don't go too close. And then at night you can just, that's when you accidentally just wander into them. And then all of a sudden there's just like a hundred of them around you. And you're like, Oh, fuck. so cool. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That sounds good. I I'll probably pick this up with my credit. Yeah, yeah, it's something we've kind of been talking about for a little bit. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Days gone, check it out. And then uh Dreams. I've been chipping away a little bit at Dreams. I was super excited for Dreams and then it came out and it was just incredibly busy and I have not played as much as I want to. Um it's really cool. Um it's not quite as intuitive as I was hoping it would be. Uh coming from like using game engines and using 3D modeling packages and stuff. Mm. It's way more awkward to like, especially sculpting, like doing art in that is like way harder than I was expecting it to be. And wow. maybe it makes more sense or is easier for someone who's not as familiar with like Maya and stuff like that. But coming from that, there's just like a couple like features in there that I'm just like, why can't I just take like an individual like, like, uh, why, why can't I like add like, uh, loops like why can't i just like divide faces and stuff like that yeah. and i'm sure it's just because of the way it's processing things i don't think it's like actually using polygonal um model like uh 3d modeling in the same way that like mine something is because you can add like there's a lot of actual like sculpting you can do with it and it's not like zbrush it's not like making a million faces and so it's probably just the way it's like interpolating the the amount of faces and like 
doing stuff that makes this actually run on a PS4 because like Z Rush couldn't like run on a PS4. You'd just be making too many polygons. <laughs> yeah. Um and stuff. So it, it's a little awkward. And I for a while I was really trying to for my first level, I was really trying to like do everything. So I was gonna sculpt all the environments, I was gonna do the environment art, the character art, the design like the pro like the programming and i was gonna do everything i was like i really want this whole level to be my own and i've been working on it for like two and a half months now and it's like because i'll spend like an hour trying to make like a fence and it's like fuck well like that was the allotted time i had to work on this now i have to go back and you know do something else like um you know related to my job or something uh and so like in i think i'm just i've been fighting the sculpting so much that i think it's just not for me i think so i think i'm just gonna start drawing assets that media molecule has available and assets in the community and just really focus on making levels and designing levels because that's what i really wanted to do with this i was really excited to just jump in and just start rapid prototyping game design and rapid prototyping levels and like creating platformers and shooters and like all sorts of things and kind of like redoing my game design demo reel with dreams because it takes a lot of like, it's not as lengthy or as difficult as working in on real engine. I'm still showing off the same thing that I want to show off. It's like my level design knowledgeability and uh, I don't know if knowledgeability is a word, but like my, my, my design knowledge and like my vision for like crafting levels and like making interesting levels and stuff like that is what I can demonstrate using these tools in a very fast and quick way. And like so far, because I've gotten sung so, so held up with actually modeling the assets myself I, I haven't really done that i haven't even finished a single level uh and so i think i'm just going to kind of re reevaluate what i want to focus on of this and it's and, you know some assets i am going to have to create myself because it's like if i want a tree that you can like platform on the branches like that's a very specific tree that's specific to the level i'm making so some things i still will have to make mm -hmm. other things like you know rocks or walls or you know houses and stuff that's just like set dressing or you know things of that there's things that don't have to be super specific to my particular level i'm probably just gonna start grabbing off of the uh off of the li like library so um okay. but it's cool i mean it's definitely like it's not as feature complete as i want it to be but it's also still in beta and they're adding to it and it's still super fun um and there's a lot of possibilities you really can make anything in it um if you're creative enough with the tool set so um i'm still really enjoying my time with it um but yeah that's more of like i don't play dreams is fun but i don't necessarily play it for fun i'm more of like it's more of like an extension of my work day because i'm like gonna use it for my demo reel so okay that's interesting yeah i've heard i've heard good stuff about dreams as well i know like uh game informer is like super big on dreams yeah. they have like a big dreams community that's making stuff so I've right heard a little bit and that's another thing too i really want to like get in early before there's just like a flood of content on it which mm. i think i might have already missed the boat on a little bit um and just like really ingratiate myself as like a dreams community member and like start getting on those uh game informer videos of like the top 10 community uh, levels we played this week and right. stuff like that and like really like you know make a name for myself in the dreams community because like people in little big planet who made like dope levels like got jobs from it you know so like yeah. and dreams even more shows off like design capabilities so i really do think that i can use this to like you know kind of get some notoriety in uh, as a game designer and so i really want to like use this as a platform to further myself and things like that cool. um, yeah. also i think it's a platform like youtube that's just going to grow over time and so like today people are just making levels for fun but you know who knows how this platform is going to evolve in the future if you can potentially monetize stuff later or if sony will potentially like release some of these levels of standalone titles or if like you know sony will kind of use this as like an incubator program or if you know dream creators are going to become like youtube creators just for games so yeah i mean like, i know um just to like uh, you know if that if that sounds unrealistic like i know bioware for a long time uh used like they said hey go download our like content creator for neverwinter nights one mm -hmm. and that was how you applied you had to have a neverwinter nights like quest created yeah that's so like, cool that's part yeah. of the applications because that's like yeah. that's literally what we do every fucking day right yeah so um yeah that's definitely like uh it seems interesting it's a really powerful tool set I, I think it'd be cool if they allowed kind of like the unity store where they allowed people to either choose to release content for free or choose to release paid content that they create in the yeah. game I, i'm sure we're going to figure out a monetization model later but as yeah. for right now i'm super happy that everything has to be for free um, because right now I think it's more just about like encouraging, uh, community, encouraging creativity and encouraging like 
cooperation and stuff. And I think if you added the ability to charge people a lot, that would disappear. Uh, I think this early in the the life cycle of this of this project, I think it's important that everything is free. Mm -hmm. And then like later on down the road, we can figure out like what's well, sort of, like, yeah, I mean, a way to monetize something. It's not even released yet. So like right, right now it's yeah. like, hey, do a bunch of crazy shit and like fuck our game engine up. Right. Yeah. And also so, like, like see what it's capable yeah, of. Break it. Yeah, and it'd be super weird if like you could charge for an asset, but then like I can't like release a game on it that I charge for. So like, you're buying stuff to release for a free product. Like it'd be really right. weird right now. Yeah. I, I what I think they should do with Dreams is I think they should just be, it just just be installed on every PS5. And I agree. Yeah. So you can get you can get it and you can immediately jump in and start like playing people's levels and stuff. And then the way you monetize it maybe is like to play dreams is free. And then if you want to create, you buy like the creator's pass or something, mm -hmm. or like you're given, like, it's almost like treat like Google drive or something. Like you can jump in and start creating stuff for free, but you only have so much server space that you can use to okay, uh, fill yeah, up your assets sense. and things like that. And then you just yeah. buy, like you know, everyone gets like 15 gigs to start with. And then you can like upgrade to like a hundred gigs for five bucks a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe it's a one-time purchase, but I think they should look into doing stuff like that and maybe like, um, offer like creator partnerships to certain people to like, you know, create games that they can release for a premium price. Um, yeah. maybe later on down the road, uh, that's maybe like beyond the scope of a typical dreams level. Um, so, but I think there's like endless possibilities of this. And I really do think like making that free on the PS five would like do so much for just like getting everyone in on this. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. ever, if you have a PS five, you have access to dreams. It also kind of alleviates a little bit of like launch title stuff because like typically like, you know, these consoles don't launch with a, a ton of launch titles. So it's like, well, you, you dreams, like you have like a hundred right now, if you just open the dreams app. Yeah, um, right. So, I mean, and that's, yeah, that's not, that's really smart. That's not like beyond something that Sony would do for sure. Because yeah. I mean, PS3 launched, like it, it launched with, um, I mean, it had, it had some like pre installed things on it already. Home. It had home <laughs> and it also had, um, that, uh, protein folding program. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Folding yeah. Home. yeah. 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 Um, so so yeah, that's something that they could do, and I, you know that's a pretty smart idea, I think. Yeah. So may, maybe that's the plan. Maybe it's you know bring it out on uh, PS4, test it now, test it out, and then yeah. when five comes yeah. out, like I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, and I mean if they want this to be the YouTube of video games, like they got, they can't put up a sixty dollar paywall in between there. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. you gotta make it open to everybody. Um, yeah. but he's still need to make money off the projects. It's obviously a very expensive tool to develop. So, you know, but I just think there's, there's other interesting ways I could monetize it without being scummy and without, yeah. you know, uh, feeling too, um, without making the people who actually bought it feel too bad. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I feel good about a media molecule of all people having it. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've had a really good, like smart customer focused background, I think. So, yeah. so. Um, and then, really um, cool. yeah. And then lastly, uh, I just got. So I just got Bloodstained Ritual of the Night in the mail the other day. Um, it was one of those things where I, like, I backed it. So I, I backed it on Kickstarter like four years ago. It was like so long Probably ago. That I, that. I forgot that I bought it because I paid like, I don't know, I think it was like the $60 tier or whatever. That was the tier that got me a physical copy. And I, I did that so long ago. I just completely forgot I, that I, I ordered it. So I didn't even know it was coming out. Like I've not been keeping up with that game's development. And so I just got it in the mail one day. I was like, oh, cool. Cool. I got a game. <laughs> it felt uh, like I got a free game because I bought it so long ago. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I, I put it in. I, I wasn't going to play it at first because I was already playing Days Gone and, and uh, Dreams. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people, other people playing on Twitter and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to ride the Zeitgeist. I'm going to put this in, chip away at it. It's different enough from those other two things where it's like kind of like I use it as like my snack game. Like if I only have like an hour or something, I don't want to like jump into a whole days gone session. Like days gone is like my long term. Like I want to settle in, um, yeah. and then dreams. Like I have to be in the mood to want to create something. And so this is like my, I got an hour. Let me just pop this in, explore a couple more rooms, you know, no huge commitment. So yeah. it, it's been, it's been a nice filler snack game for like there. Uh, I'm not too far in yet. Maybe only like two hours in, um, I've explored, uh, all of the castle that I can explore right now. I have to beat this boss to progress and I'm just having a really hard time with the boss. Um, but it's cool. I mean, it's, um, it feels like the sequel to symphony of the night. And I know there's been other castlevania games since then, and there's been other 
uh, Metroidvania games since then. I think more so than any of those other things, this feels like it is a direct sequel to Symphony of the Night. Um, the menu styles, the menu sounds, like the presentation, all of it like harkens back to like the Symphony of the Night vibes. Um, and it's just like it's taking all those mechanics from that game, and it's just it's adding to them in interesting ways that you would expect a sequel to add to. Uh, and so it keeps very much the same tone, the same vibe, the same feeling of Symphony of the Night, and then just adds upon that uh, in interesting ways, like adding side quests, adding like kind of like a, a home hub world that you can go back to, and like it's peaceful there, and you have NPCs that you can talk to. Mm-hmm. The story is way, it's like seems way more thought out. Uh, there's voice acting, and it's pretty good, like better than I thought it was going to be. Um, there's, you know, there's conversations to be had with other NPCs and stuff. It's like, it feels like a more fully fleshed out world than Symphony of the Night did. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's fun to explore. The game looks gorgeous. It is beautiful looking. Like I said, I have not been keeping up with the game's development. So I actually didn't know what the game was going to look like when I put it in. And it is a beautiful, beautiful game. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of, uh, weapon variety and stuff. Uh, there's, um, a cool crafting system. I normally not into crafting systems, uh, but this one like feels, I don't feel bad. I don't feel like a lot of times in crafting systems, it gives me a lot of anxiety. Cause I'm like, I don't know how rare these items are. And like afraid of using them now and not have, uh, and there's still a little bit of that, but um, there's also a store that sells the same thing. So you have the option of crafting something or buying something. And so uh, I kind of like I just pay attention to like what I usually pick up and how much of an item I have and like how rare the thing I'm crafting feels like if I'm crafting a potion I feel like the ingredients for that probably aren't super rare uh, because it's just like a normal potion um, but like if there's something like more you know uh, if I do want to save those items I can just go buy a potion at the store I don't have to craft it um, and like vice versa like if there's something that like you know costs a lot of money but I have like a couple like of the materials for but i feel like i'm looking through the list and like these materials aren't really used for a whole lot of other things maybe just like you know the difference between the sword or the sax well it's like i know i don't like using axes so like i'm going to use these on the sword i want so um it's uh it, it, it strikes a better balance than it's more clear about its ingredients than some of the other other things i've played of crafting systems um so yeah i'm having a really really good time with it mm-hmm. nice yeah it looks it looks really good um so. like I didn't expect the voice acting to be at the level that it was at. Like when I like watched a like a I don't know if it was like a quick look or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it like there was a lot of things that were surprising about it. So yeah. and this isn't usually my type of game either. Uh, so you know, I guess that kind of says something cool. about it. I'm I'm pretty interested in checking this one out. Too. cool yeah i mean i love symphony of night but i haven't played uh, too many other metroidvania games uh i'm not really big in this is gonna sound weird but i'm not super big into 2d games um yep. mostly because i'm bad at them like i'm really bad at 2d games so i just tend not to play them a whole lot um like shovel knight i bought it fucking terrible at it i will never finish that game like i, I have a hard time like the first couple levels i'm just like i i just don't have the patience to get better at this um and so like i'm more into like 3d platforms and 3d things like that but i love symphony of the night and i think the only other metroidvania i've really played is like guacamole and so like you know like hollow knight looks cool and stuff but like a lot of metroidvanias just kind of feel like the same game with a different coat of paint and like i'm not super into 2d games anyway so i just kind of like skip them um but uh you know like igarashi was coming back so i was like you know what symphony of the night spiritual successor gotta check it out super glad i did because i love symphony of the night and i love this so nice yeah. What about you? Uh, this game out. What was that? Yeah, what was that? Are you gonna check the game out? Uh, I probably won't. I'm, I'm also super not into 2D stuff. I really don't like platformers. I wasn't in any of the Metroidvania style games. Okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's another thing too. I mean, if you're if you're not into Symphony of Night, this yeah, who enjoyed Symphony of Night? So. Yeah. Um. But yeah. uh. Yeah. All right. I do like that they went a lot more like in depth with more weapons, gear, stuff. That kind of extra RPG element I think is really smart. Yeah, it's cool. There's a lot of customizable things. You, there's like a bunch of different accessories to customize. Uh, you have um, the character your powers. Itself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the powers are determined by these crystals that are like they implant themselves in your body, 
And so um, there's a bunch of different crystal slots to do different things. Like there's a conjure, there's a familiar, there's a passive, um, there's a projectile. Um, and you can swap those out with different ones you can get. Like you get them by killing enemies. And then so some enemies uh, will just drop one. And then if they will keep dropping those crystals, the more you stack up, the stronger that ability will get. But there's also something interesting with this mechanic that this priest was telling me that like the crystals are also corrupting my body. And so carrying too many around with me is going to have complications but i don't know what those complications mm. are yet and i'm too early in the game to really feel them so i'm re- so far i haven't sold any crystals i'm keeping all the ones i have because i'm still too early to figure out which ones i really like and which ones i like which abilities i don't really like using and which ones are like you know better and stuff like that so i'm kind of still experimenting with them so i haven't sold any yet so i'm, I'm wondering if like that's just flavor text if that is just like in service of the story or if there's like gameplay ramifications to carrying around too many crystals and what those would be. So. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Yeah, All right. So uh, I guess, uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll dive into some of your E3 experience. Yeah. Uh, and as always, you know, before that you guys can always head over to, uh, Facebook.com backslash Mammoth Games Inc. Check out all of the top video game stuff, uh, that we talk about here. There first as well on Twitter. Uh, at Mammoth Games Inc. Um, it looks like we, or, you know, and the tweet that we also have has uh, your um, Drake has your Twitter attached to it. I don't know how much you use that, but uh, you know, the uh, listeners less would not like. like. I'm going to try and tweet more. So yeah, if the Twitters would like to go follow Drake, you can uh, also grab him on our latest posts. Cool. cool. Yeah. So let's jump into it. Uh, how do you want to? Do you, do you want to so, save something specific for last, or do you just want to start at the beginning and? Um, I, I'm going to talk about it in uh, the high con show as a as a convention that I went to, uh, and then I'll narrow down, um, the games I played, and I'll, I'll end by just some some notable booths that like just deserve deserve talking about. Uh, yeah, if that's all right with you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, as a show this year, uh, this was a scaled back E3. I mean, you could probably get this just from the press conferences. Like the press conferences just weren't as good this year. Yeah. Um, and like it, it, this is just a symptom of the year that we're in right now. It's too early to announce stuff for next gen. It's too late to announce stuff for this gen. So you, you really just like you, there's not a whole lot to talk about this year at E3. Um, and the, the, the show floor definitely represent that. I mean, it wasn't just Sony who skipped out. It was like Activision wasn't there. Like there's a bunch of companies that just didn't come this year. And the companies that did had less to show. So the booths were smaller. So there was a lot of floor space that wasn't used. Uh, there was all like weird third party, like accessory brands there and other strange, like companies that you've never heard of. And like their booths might be like visually interesting, but there's really nothing there that you want to actually check out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was just a dialed back E3. Uh, that being said, um, this year was, I mean, I wouldn't trade E3 time for anything. Even a dialed back E3 is super fun. But um, uh, that being said, this this year's show was run far better than any other show. And so if you've been following the chronicles of my E3 adventures on this podcast year after year, uh, you'll know that I have a huge issue with... Um, uh, the fact that they let in general public now because it just makes the whole show a mess. And this is the first year that it was like not a mess. It was actually super like reasonably like they found, they finally found the balance. It feels like, um, where like, it wasn't that big of a deal that there were general pass holders there. So they upped the industry hours on the first two days to three hours. So from, you know, three, the first three hours of the day are industry only. And that is the best time of the day because like, lines are a breeze there's not too many people in the hallways you can just like walk around and you can check out a whole bunch of stuff um the thq nordic booth especially was just like there's always an empty station like there were no lines at that booth i felt so bad for him um but there was just there's there's like a lot to check out uh that you could actually check out because you didn't have to wait eight hours in line and then um even after the public got in the lines were longer uh, but it still wasn't as bad as past years because, like, developers just they started showing up with more stations. They started shortening their gameplay demos. Uh, they just did a lot to make the lines move quicker and, like, manage the higher traffic. Uh, and so I still had, like, a, a lot of fun and played a lot of things even after people got into the show. Uh, and then the third thing that they did, and not every developer has started this, but I think this is going to be more and more widely adopted. Square Enix was big on this. 
they did a ticket system. So hmm. when you get in, you want to go play Final Fantasy VII, you go up to the booth and they don't you don't start sitting in line. They give you a ticket to come back later, depending on That's like smart. how many yeah. they've already given out. Right. It's like a fast pass. So for Avengers, for example, I got up there and I got in there and by the time I got to the ticket booth, it was like an hour and a half after the show had opened. And my, like, so this is like eight, this is like a uh, 10 30 AM and my ticket was until 4 PM. And so in years past, I would have been waiting in line from 10 30 to four instead, right. like they just like, this is the next time we will have a station available for you go and do something else in the meantime. So you're still waiting the same amount of time, but now you're not waiting in line and go check out other things. You can play yeah. games that have shorter lines or you can, you know, just walk around the show floor and just enjoy the booths. So it was a great system. I, I really inc- like hope that all the studios start adopting this. Um, and then there was other ones like Borderlands three who didn't have a ticket system, but they had a hundred stations. So wow. that okay. line really, really moved. Yeah. So the, um, like I, when I went and saw, um, when I played kingdom hearts early, they did the exact same thing. They had yeah. like people with, uh, it, it wasn't like a ticket. It was just, I mean, I think they gave us like one ticket for our group of like three that we mm-hmm. had go. Um, mm-hmm. Oh no, no, they actually did. They just took down our email and then uh, and our phone number, and they just texted us when it was ready, when our time was uh, oh, fifteen cool. minutes until. Nice. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So and- I, I, I I said the exact same thing when I walked out of that. I was like, why don't they do this for freaking everything? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Nintendo, Sony has a system, but Sony wasn't there this year. Uh, Sony's had the system for years, but Nintendo started adopting the system where, like, you just register online. So you go on like Nintendo's website or whatever, uh, and you like log in for your information, and then you're just like, I want an appointment for Luigi's Mansion Three, and they're like, Okay, three o'clock is your is your time slot, and then you just go there at three and you just play the thing. If mm-hmm. now if you didn't get an appointment, you can still wait in the in like the overflow line. You can still wait in like the standby line. But there was no guarantee you actually get in because like not everyone who gets an appointment is actually going to show up. And so right. if someone's just like not there for that particular time slot, then they'll let in the people in the like standby line. But like that's, you know, if you really want to play Luigi Mansion 3 and like you didn't get a ticket, like stand in that line all day and like roll the dice and like you probably they'll probably get you in. But like that's probably the only thing you're going to do that day. So you still you're waiting out line for a long time, but you go in there with the knowledge that like. I understand that this line is only going to move if people don't show up. So yeah. um, it's, it's just a great system that, that everyone should do. Um, mm-hmm. Now um, I will uh, now. So I got to play as a result. I got to play a lot here. So I played one, two, three, four. I played five games. And I got to see three theater demos. Um, I will start with the theater demos. Um, and then my gameplay impressions most of those, all those are going to go pretty quick except for one. So, um, the theater demos, uh, I got to see, uh, cyberpunk, uh, oh as Keanu Reeves, as Keanu Reeves says, um, I got to see cyberpunk 2077. Uh, it's, uh, it was, it was pretty dope. Uh, so got in there. Um, it was a 30 minute demo. Uh, and what they were really showing off this time was the difference between gameplay builds. Mm-hmm. So, um, they did basically the same area twice with like two different builds. So they had one that was like more hacking self and one that was like uh, a more like strength focus build. Uh, and the, the whole point was to really highlight the difference, uh, in their, like how dynamic their level design was and their mission design and how like you can like go through the same scenario in dramatically different ways uh and so the hacker guy he would go through and you know he would be stealthy he would sneak past people he would duck behind stuff he would hack into like because this is a fully connected world like everything's online so he could hack into like things that like you wouldn't even expect like like the bench press like there's a bench press that's like you know you just add weight on electronically and like the machine just like adds more pressure so you can hack into that and then you can just like add like max weight and just like it'll come down like snap the dude's neck because there's like too much pressure on the bench press um you can hack into like soda machines and stuff to like create distractions and go through uh but what's super interesting is you uh have this thing like called nanowire 
and you can use that to like throw in into people and like hack into like their appendages and stuff. So you could mm-hmm. like make one dude like shoot himself in the head because his robot was like a bionic arm. I mean, his 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 uh, body had like a bionic arm on it. Um, uh, and they didn't show this, but like you just imagine like you know they've already s- shown that you can have like augmented eyes and stuff. So can you potentially hack into people's eyes and like use those as surveillance cameras? Like raises a lot of possibilities for what you can do if you can hack into people's actual uh, biomechanics. Um, and uh, then you can also use this nanowire as like a, a super like heated whip and like really carve people up and stuff. So um, it seemed like even if you go down like the hacker tree and stuff, there's still like cool combat abilities down that line too. Because that's another thing. You can't just like choose to like hack into people's like arms uh and stuff you you have to build to that so like you have to like go down that skill tree to get to it so you have to make mm-hmm. it to what kind of character you want to be and what tools sound most interesting to you down the road um and then the strength build like you would you you would go in you could basically take the quick way because like there's no such thing as a locked door anymore you can literally rip the doors off the wall like you can just That's rip cool. the hinges off so you can just like you know <laughs> hulk smash your way through whatever doorway you want to get to and just like you know fight anyone um in the way uh now i mean there's still there's limitations it felt like like so uh, uh some issues kind of felt like the the result is the same it's just like how you get there is slightly different for example the hacker can hack into turrets and like use those to you know take down enemies uh the strength build can just literally rip the turret off and use it as a mini gun mm-hmm. so i mean the end result's the same the turret's now yours how you it's just a, a preference of how you get there so i think a lot of the differences in builds are actually going to come more down to um your traversal and like how you get through a level as opposed on how you actually deal with like combat scenarios and stuff like that um uh and then uh johnny silverhand i believe is the character Yep. plays and uh he's like in your head so he's like kind of like uh um you know he, I, I don't know if he if, i don't know if he has a physical like somewhere but like he's like in your subconscious and he kind of like he talks to you and he'll appear and stuff like that um and like try and convince you to do one thing or the other uh he wasn't in this demo a lot but he did pop up for a second um but uh your character uh as like most characters uh, most people in this game have like this like Neuralink that they have that like mm. kind of like USB port that comes out of their arm and you can connect to different things. And so uh, during the way this mission started was there's this guy who was giving you this contract. He wants to like upload information to your Neuralink and like he would not do business with you unless he could like, unless you, you gave him your uplink. Um, and so in the mission uh, they did that because like, that was like the way to progress for his particular mission, but like giving people your uplink is not always going to be a good thing. They can do a lot of bad things with that. They can like hack into you. They can like pull information. They can do a whole lot of like plant viruses and stuff. There's a whole bunch of things that like can go wrong by giving someone access to your uplink. So that's going to be a decision you're going to have to make as you go through, like who do you trust with that information and things like that. And you really did get the sense that, um, you know, a whole lot of story scenarios can play out in vastly different ways, just depending on the choices you make and how you go through it. And there's really no good choice or bad choice. It's all just like, how do you want to live? Nice. So um, it was a pretty impressive demo. I really enjoyed it, but uh, I feel like everything I just said is you would have expected me to say. So is there any questions you have that you feel that you feel like I might be able to answer? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I know we talked about, what we heard about with the, the uh, additional story stuff. So I think we're pretty caught up on like, you know, the game is in a couple phases where the gameplay demo last year was like, you're building your street cred to work with this guy. And then the, the demo this year was, okay, that guy double crosses you and you get kind of kicked to this weird new part of the city. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like all of my questions at this point, like, you know, this is a day one. Like this is pre-order, no question to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I all my questions are like gameplay feel, and this was a guided like. Right, I, I just know, watched watching them. I didn't actually get to, get to play it myself, but yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, I don't. Um, I mean, how does it? Uh, was it like cutscene heavy? Um. Yeah, uh, I don't. 
Now that you mentioned it, I don't actually recall the camera cutting out the third person at all. So I don't know that I saw a cutscene. There's certainly dialogue okay. and stuff like that, but I think you stayed in world the whole time. Yeah, it's like so. um, I know they do something similar. They did in um, Witcher, where it was kind of like Mass Effect, where it just like sets up a scene where you go into dialogue, but it doesn't mm-hmm. like take you out of the game or load a new area or anything. Yeah. I kind of hope it does cut the third because I just I want to see my character. You know, like that's my biggest yeah bummer about the game is like I. You know, <laughs> person i'm not a huge first person guy um i definitely understand like their rationale but like i do hope there's some cutscenes that cut the third mm-hmm. um, well yeah so. when people spend like six hours creating their character and then it's just first person the rest of the game it's like uh what was that for yeah. right yeah especially because you can like customize with jackets and stuff and it's like why just yeah. so i can see the sleeves like i don't know why i care yeah um but um yeah i mean i, I think for me uh, a lot of my questions uh a lot of my questions are answered, and a lot of it's kind of self-explanatory from what we've seen, you know, mm-hmm. just yeah. just in the game. I do want to know a bit more about that uh, about that wire that like yes. cuts people's fucking limbs off and stuff. That thing looked like super sick. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like like you were saying, like most of it, I think is. Um, it's been discussed. Yeah, it's all been discussed, but as well, it's all it all comes down to. Uh, like player choice and execution on where they want to go, and I think that's mm-hmm. probably the most interesting thing for me. Like, mm-hmm. am I going to rip the turret off the wall and then destroy everybody with it, or am I going to hack it and have it do it for me while I sit back and like polish my nails? You know right. what I mean? Um, now, one other interesting thing about it is like that I really appreciate, um, and something I've been wanting to do in games for a while. I just like not the place where I'm publishing games yet. Um, is the world moves on and like operates without you necessarily intervening mm-hmm. so there is like a uh like a chopper in the background like a helicopter that was just like mini gunning into like the skyscraper and then it just like it flew off and it's like something went down over there like that was either gang yeah. warfare or like a police like operation to like you know eliminate a gang hideout or something but it's like you know what if i had been over there right now you know what i mean like feel like that was a scripted thing that happened because you walked out of the building i feel like that was just a thing that happened in the world and it's like i had the player happened to like be doing this other thing over here and i saw it from distance but like what if i was in a mission over there and that's just like was when the police decided that they were going to shoot it up and like me being there had nothing to do with that or like what if i was like ground level and it starts like raining glass and like you know how are the people on the ground gonna react to that kind of stuff so yeah. um you know the fact that the world just like the world lives without you necessarily doing anything is like super exciting and like it's going to present a lot of dynamic hopefully will present a lot of dynamic um yeah. you know situations that's really cool yeah yeah so super good um <laughs> And it can be cool, too, that, like, you know, adds to replayability where it's like, okay, I played this game where I had, you know, such and such happen. But then it's like, I saw this thing off in the distance, and I know that it happens at around three hours into the game. So maybe next time I play through, I'll go over there. Right. Um, Or maybe it won't happen at the same time in your second playthrough, just depending on how characters interact with each other. Uh, I mean, this game is going to be... It's it's a weird it's a weird paradox because this game is probably going to be super super replayable, but it's also going to be like a hundred hours long. I'm not going to have time to replay it. That's kind of like I think The Witcher like that was a main like complaint that it's not super replayable because for most choices that you're making, there's only one, two, or three options. So Mm. there's really not a whole bunch of crazy shit going on for the most part. Right. Um. So I think they're that's one of their main things they're trying to address with this game in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so, so next, oh, well, no, go I, ahead. If you have more questions, I was just going to ask about the booth itself. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. So, like, um, what did that look like on the floor? Uh, it was, uh, it was okay. Uh, it was, uh, the outside is kind of like this, uh, it was supposed to look like, um, maybe the side of like a, a city, a city building, like mm-hmm. a city skyscraper, maybe like the ground floor of it. Like there's graffiti, graffiti all over it, and there was some like, you know, stone barricades put up and stuff, but, uh, mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't anything too too crazy. When you got into the actual theater room, it was just like a normal theater room. So okay. it was cool to walk by and look at, but like it's not anything particularly memorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. La- so. well, what was it last year? They had the the whole Spider Man setup. L- last year, yes, the yeah. Spider Man one was super cool. They had like they kind of like built a New York City block, and there was like a, 
suspended helicopter and Spider-Man was shown on one of the buildings. They had newspaper crazy. stands. <laughs> they had like newspaper stands yeah. that uh, you could open and just take a newspaper. And it was like five page newspaper that was like in world talking about like Spider-Man, like the Sinister Six and like all this stuff. Holy so, shit. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of world epic. building. Um, when, there is a crown jewel this year of, of E3 booths, and I will save that for last. Um, nice. But uh, um, next, I got to check out Watch Dogs Legion. Um, I'm not going in the order I check these things out. It's just like next on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, Watch Dogs is probably my... I, I it, it went from a game that I like it was passively interested like a Watch Dogs three like if you told me well like Watch Dogs three is gonna be announced which we all kind of thought it would be mm-hmm. I'm like passively interested right like I enjoyed the first Watch Dogs I bought the second but never played it I'll get around to it one day but like you know I'm not like actively excited for the next Watch Dogs game um, and so it's just risen to like maybe my second most anticipated game of next year. Nice. Um, yeah. I am so excited for Watch Dogs th- Legion because it is to me doing something that is truly groundbreaking. Like I, there is nothing else like this. So I, yeah. I'll, I, I do want to hop in here because I, mm-hmm. I was taking list. I didn't know how how our our show was going to be uh, exactly ran this year um, mm-hmm. because you know usually we talk about our favorite things and then we kind of run down. So I wrote down some of my favorite things. Watch Dogs Legion was probably my favorite thing from this E3, barring mm-hmm. Cyberpunk, just because mm-hmm. we saw Cyberpunk last year, and it's like, it would be the only thing that would make me not... Like, like I, I, it's not that I don't want to say Cyberpunk's my favorite thing. It's like, Cyberpunk is definitely amazing, and it's my most anticipated thing, but I have to kind of remove it because it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I need, like, it's like, let's look at other stuff too. Right, and sure, Watch Dogs, sure, sure. Watch, Watch Dogs Legion was yeah like definitely, definitely my favorite thing favorite announced. Thing. Yeah, yeah, my favorite thing announced at the Series E three for sure. And mm-hmm. so when I was actually when I was in the Cyberpunk line waiting to get into the theater demo, I was actually right next to. And this is another reason why I love industry hours because one other thing, great thing about E three is I get to talk to game developers from other parts of the world that I wouldn't normally get to interact with. Mm-hmm. Um, and like once general public's in, I'm just like I'm probably not next to anyone in industry. Um, so it's like, I mean, there's still cool people and I still enjoy talking to people, but like, you know, it's, it's just so much more part of the reason I go to E3 is to like interact with like these other developers. And I was, uh, I was in the cyberpunk line during industry hours and I was right next to, uh, one of the guys who worked on watchdogs legion. Um, he had recently like, uh, moved on to form his own studio and stuff, but he was, he's been, he, that was like six months ago. So he was in most of the development of this game. And so all the information I'm going to tell you is a combination between the stuff I asked him and the stuff that Ubisoft told me at the Watch Dogs booth. Because uh, again, I didn't actually get to play it. It was a theater demo of someone else mm-hmm. playing it and explaining the mechanics. And I think the best thing I can say about the game is it works like advertised. Uh, like it does work like that. Um, you can actually play as any every NPC in the game, any NPC in the game. Um, and like the biggest thing that I was questioning after the E3 demo on the, at the press conference was, um, you know, the one guy died and then you take over and you play as like Helen or whatever. And she's like commenting on Ricky who just like, who just got killed. And I was like, I was thinking this has to be like orchestrated for this gameplay demo for E3 because there is no way that they recorded lines for every single character in the event that they died and stuff. And so apparently what it does is it kind of, it does actually do that. Like if a character dies, you switch to the next character. Like they will talk about the dude who just died. Um, And the way it does it is it's almost, it's kind of like GPS technology where it's not like they necessarily went through and recorded that line a hundred times with that name with different names and stuff. Um, It just kind of like the system just will like, it will mix and match certain dialogue strings and stuff and put them together into full sentences, depending on what's happening. But like, they just like that tech has just gotten super good. That just sounds really, really natural. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So like everything that the demo promised is absolutely true. Um, uh, the, in the demo I saw, like we were just, we, we picked a random person. They had the crowd, let them help pick a random person off the street. We went up to them. We did their origin mission. Every single NPC in the game has an origin mission, and they are all different. Um, 
there are limitations like some origin missions are going to be a little similar to others but like they are unique missions you're not replaying the exact same mission um the world is like huge and so like you every single origin mission will take place in a slightly different location um and like it's kind of like it's i think it i think the basic way he was describing it is like some, sounds like some interiors are kind of like procedurally generated a little bit so like you'll go into like a warehouse and like it'll just kind of mix the layup out so it's not like super similar to like another layout of like an origin mission that you did for somebody else um but every single character can be recruited it just depends on like how hard they are to recruit and so for example like let's say like guards like there's no such thing as like an enemy npc there's just npcs and so like yeah like somebody might be working for the police or they might be working for, like the government or something they might be a guard but you can like go into a situation you can tag them save like save them leave and then just wait for their shift to be over and then go and like talk to them when they're like at their house or at a bar because every single npc in the game has a life they have a routine and they have like places they go so like that guard that's guarding that factory that you need to go and break into he's not there all the time his shift is over and then he mm -hmm. goes home or he goes to the bar or he goes to the grocery store like he lives a life outside of just being the guard at the factory and yeah. so and that's you can go and recruit that, him if you want to yeah that's um, really cool that, that that really um like drives that like this was one of my favorite things mm -hmm. that, that, that's that's fantastic like usually we see um you know we, we see that like okay, this character he's just a he's just a guard. He's here always. He never ever leaves, and you know he walks this path. But you know, seeing that you know the other side of it, and like someone trying to tackle the other side of it. Yeah, I think that's it's so amazing. cool. And now something I didn't get to ask, but something that I'm kind of like wondering and a little bit assuming. It's like okay, so let's say he's a guard that works at that factory. Like he's let's say he's he's like one of the government dudes, like one of the guys in like the riot suits and stuff. And he's defending, you know, this this particular building. And if I go and recruit him, like, does he does like after he's a recruit, does he quit what he was doing before? And like now he's just in dead sec or like, can I use him to like stealth infiltrate? Can I just go to this facility and like no one will raise any questions because it's like I'm supposed to be there because like it's my shift and like I work there now. Uh, mm. Or like just like I so I do wonder that I do wonder like if you're a cop can you just walk in if you recruit a cop can you just walk into police stations and like pull documents and pull files and stuff or like after you're in dead sec do you like do you like leave your past life behind that was not made clear so I don't know but I'm assuming that's probably going to be a mechanic of it mm. um, if not I'll be a little dis if not yeah. I'd be a little disappointed um now once you recruit somebody you do give them an archetype so there's three archetypes there's uh infiltrator demolitionist and hacker um mm. and so uh as far as the skill trees and like the abilities like that each person gets as far as like who can use like explosives and who has like cloaking material and who has you know abilities to like the little spider bots and stuff like determined when you when you recruit that character and you give them the archetype and you set them down a skill path tree oh you, so so you have to give them the archetype yes yeah um, i think now i think there's some people who are better suited for certain roles. Mm -hmm. so like if you recruit a drone expert you probably just want to make them also a hacker but like i guess you could always like make them a demolitionist if you just didn't give a fuck um but uh because each character does have specific stats and things that they're good at and stuff like that and backgrounds and things um, but so each, so some, I, I imagine like these characters aren't necessarily going to play, like if you, if you have a hundred different NPCs, there's probably only going to play like 10 different types of ways, you know, because like, it's like their natural physical abilities, like grandmas are like slower than, you know, Olympic sprinters. Um, but you know, within that, then you also give them like, you know, their archetype of those three, uh, from those three classes. Uh, so I do imagine that like gameplay wise, like some people are probably just going to be like very similar and like really only different. Mm -hmm. like the way they carry themselves and stuff but still it's super cool um and then the last thing that just like was really interesting about it was um uh they when you're not playing as them they they live their lives now they were not clear whether or not like if you're playing as susan if you can just go find gerard and gerard's just like hanging out at a bar um like or if like technically like they've disappeared from the map like it didn't I asked the I asked the guy who worked on the game, and he was like, we "We're trying to make that work, but there were some difficulties." He said, "And I left six months ago, so I don't know if they like nailed that or just scrapped that." So 
Um, you know, it might not be able to simulate the lives of your other playable characters when you're not playing as them. Um, but uh, th- things can still happen to them. So, for example, if you recruit someone who's a drug addict, they might just die when you're not playing as them because they went like they did a whole bunch of heroin or something. So, yes. like these characters, even if they are not necessarily present on that map doing things, their quote unquote lives still go on. And so, like that's something you want to pay attention to when you're recruiting people. Is like, well, like are they going to be, you know, are they going to be a problem in other areas of their life? Things that's going to come up with them that's going to be an issue later. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, that's yeah, yeah people that's can have like heart conditions and stuff, and it's just like they'll get an update. It's like, uh, yeah, oh, Louis yes. had a heart attack. <laughs> they're, well, they can like, I know certain individuals can like die randomly while you're playing them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. So, uh, any questions about Watchdog Legion? Um, oh, it's I, really I, cool. I, I like it. Yeah, for me, uh, I think a lot of that was kind of answered. Uh, like I, I I freaking love that system. When when I was watching that tr- um that presentation and we saw that guy drop and then it was like permadeath, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> that's so fucking good. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is about permanent death in video games that is exciting for me, but it it is it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, um, you yeah, are it stakes. Yeah, and like I, I can't wait to see that. Like I, I can pretty much guarantee that that trophy or you know achievement will be in there. Like playing through without you know playing through without having a character die or something like that. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I, I, I can't yeah, wait for that. It's really exciting because it adds stakes to a thing that's like you, you, you think of the GTAs and Watch Dogs and like these kind of open world action games and stuff. And it's like death is just kind of like a minor inconvenience. It's like oh, yeah. I died. Off to restart this fight from the beginning or something like you don't really yeah, like care as much. You almost yeah, you play those games kind of on like autopilot almost, yeah. um, and it's just like add stakes. It's like well, fuck, like yeah, if 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 I die here, Ricky's gone, and like I'll have to do this again as like Susan and I was like you know, yeah yeah, I and, like Ricky a lot, and and that that could be the difference between you know like one big mistake and seventeen hours, you know yeah, and yeah. I, I I am a big fan of that kind of consequence and i know definitely not everybody is i feel like the majority of the people that i uh you know that i chat with like i I don't feel like that would be something filter here would be excited about no i am glad and and, i mean it's i I like like xcom um the permadeath and like fire emblem like i try to avoid it but if it's particularly um I don't know if I feel like the right thing has happened. Like this person died in a good way, and it, you know, the I don't know if it if I am down with it, then I'll keep rolling on it. Mm-hmm. And I also like that in this game, like the people are replaceable. Like you have yeah. a really good character that you you really like their attitude and their bonuses or whatever, but you can replace them relatively easily. And the person you get is going to be. I guess you have to re-level them or whatever you have to do to get them back to that same state. But it's not like a complete, like, yeah, it's not like an RPG. It's not like you're you haven't just level. lost. Like you have to reload watchdogs at the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I really like the, the almost like role play style of like, yeah. you're playing as, you know, Helen from like Mulberry Park or whatever. And I really she's like a, that. Yeah. She's a, and she's an old badass, but you know, she isn't going to last throughout the year. Uh, she has a heart condition. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. And, like, and I mean, that's why, like... It's really cool. Yeah, it's the context. Like, this is the context of, like, this is, like, a, a street war, basically. And, like, there will be casualties mm-hmm. and people will die. And I think it's going to sell the vibe of the game even more that you're going to yeah. through. And, like, I really hope during the end credits crawl, there's, like, obituaries of all the people, like, you lost throughout mm-hmm. this. And, like, you're going to think back. And it's like, oh, shit! Yeah, Jimmy, he was the first one who died. I forgot about him. Like he I lost him the first two hours of that game. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah that'd be really good. And it sounds like they have a like they have a really good balance. Like permadeath can be daunting for some people. Like and it, it, it's like it, it's it's a huge negative to them. They're like, "Why would I want to play a game where I put time into this character and then if I'm, you know, if there's a mistake to be made, then I have to start it all over?" Like And I I think, uh, yeah, I I really think that they found that way of, like, I have to start it all over, but it's not a crazy, crazy big deal just because I can replace them pretty easily. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, they they have a good balance for sure. 
Um, so yeah. the next next thing I checked out was um, the last thing on the theater demo list I saw was Avengers. Um, and um, so I, I, there's been a lot of criticism and flash, uh, you know, backlash from this game uh, post trailer. And I think that yeah. comes down to like, I don't know why they didn't just show the gameplay trailer in the E3 demo. Yeah. Um, they heard. that they showed is like a weird, like cut down edited version of the gameplay I saw. Mm. And I really do think, I think like people who bitch about, you know, E3 downgrades are kind of the people to blame here. Um, because it's like, I think like a lot of companies are just afraid to show things because things change in development and people don't understand that. And so like something is altered in development and then people are like all up in arms that this doesn't look like the work in progress footage that I saw from a year ago. Um, and Avengers specifically like is a little janky right now. And I think they were just afraid to put it out and like people like, you know, criticize take it, it and run with it and like assume the worst. Cause I mean, this game is not coming out until what, like May, like there's so yeah. much time to like, polished things and stuff and so it looked at, but i think they could just like come out on stage put out the disclaimer like hey look it's gonna look janky but we just we want to show it to you and things will change before the end some things might you know look better some things might look worse like that's just how game development works mm-hmm. um and uh yeah so they showed you playing as all five of the avengers uh in the game um and each character kind of like looks like they actually they they all play more similarly than I thought they were going to like they all have a very similar base in their combat that's like melee action combat um I actually think it might end up being a little bit more combo based than like uh Arkham or Spider-Man it didn't really look like it was the basic like punching counter system uh it kind of looks like the combat's like a little bit more interesting um than that uh the combat designer uh, one of the combat designers worked out a the most recent one so nice. like like thor like looks like he plays very similarly like, to kratos and like the most recent god of war uh you can throw the hammer and like it'll stay there until you call it back um and you can use it to like pin enemies to, like walls and stuff and so you can kind of use the hammer as crowd control and then use your fists but then obviously you're not as strong if you're with the fist so you're sacrificing a little bit of strength for like you know like leveling out like the the enemies you're fighting like kind of like saving some people for later and stuff and you can call it back any time you can like jump up and do like a ground slam and stuff um there are some abilities that are on cooldowns um which worried me at first because uh like that just felt very mmoe to me and stuff to like have stuff on cooldowns and things um but it didn't look like that was like a central part of like the combat did not look like it revolved around using the attack waiting for the cooldown using it again it just seemed like a nice extra bonus that you could do to like do a little bit of aoe damage or like just do a little bit of a special attack and stuff so again like it felt more like god of war where like you're waiting for your runes to recharge and things like that but there's still definitely like other viable combat mechanics outside of that so it's not like just waiting for meters to charge back up Mm -hmm. um and uh yeah and then uh iron man the only time we saw him flying was kind of on rails i don't know if that's has to do like every time you fly if him is gonna be on rails or just because this was a very like linear like this looked like it was the tutorial mission of the like first mission you ever do like you boot up the game this is the first thing you're gonna do is do this um do this event um and so it might have just been like getting used to like flying controls and stuff but then once he gets on the ground like every character is super melee focused and then you know you do have some of your energy beams and stuff that you can fire with uh with iron man um hulk uh maybe looked like he was probably the most fun uh he's just like you know just a wrecking ball just like um you know like picking up dudes and throwing them off the bridge and picking up guys and like hitting them with other guys and like you know really just like going crazy um i'm gonna be interested to see how they like balance this like realistically like how you make like does hulk just have a because hulk's like the strongest right so like he has a huge health bar and he does massive amount of damage like what's the downside to being hulk uh this demo didn't really get into any of that um yes. hulk can also wall run so that's cool oh, son what? Of a bitch. i was like he has to be slower or yeah, something man, right <laughs> <laughs> no he can just he didn't seem slower to me he just like he's just wall running and like ping and like, coming down like I, so i mean yeah i was I just know. i was just like well he has to be slower right and that was at the same time you were saying well and he was wall running and i was like son <laughs> of a bitch <laughs> So I don't think I made that up. I don't think that was a fever dream I had. I'm pretty sure I saw him like because there was like a semi, there was the bridge was like falling like collapsed and there was like a semi truck and I think he just kind of like ran across the edge of the semi truck, um like nice. with like one hand on the top kind of like keeping his balance and stuff. 
Um, but I mean, maybe maybe that's my imagination. I f- swear I saw that. Uh, I don't know. E three was a couple weeks ago now, so my memory's fading. Um, uh, then we saw uh, Black Widow uh, was during the boss fight. So there's a boss fight against Taskmaster. So I, it seemed like a different Taskmaster than the one from Spider-Man. So I don't think it's in the same universe as Spider-Man. Um, but uh, she was fighting him and uh, she has a cloaking ability, which I don't think I've ever seen in the movies. Like I was not aware that she can just like turn invisible. Um, she has like her combat is again, still melee focused, but like the guns really differentiate the way she plays and stuff. Uh, I think you have infinite ammo, but like I've like, reloaded clips and stuff. So Taskmaster would like fly through. She would do like dodge rolls and stuff and take out the guns and shoot at him because he was like flying. Um, and then like once his like boosters or whatever, like overheated, then she would go down and like you guys would have some fisticuff fights before you like took off again. Um, uh, and then Captain, uh, when you're playing as Captain, uh, he also looked very, very fun uh all these guys look fun actually like there's no adventure that looks like i don't want to play as them like they all look really interesting in their own ways um but uh captain uh he like thor he can he throws his weapon uh but the difference with the shields you don't call it back obviously it just like ricochets and then you know he just catches it and so for him but like thor's thing like that hammer throw it it's not going to bounce around but like mm-hmm. captain's shield it will bounce around but then you have to catch again in a couple seconds so i think like a lot of the stuff of him is going to be like, well, when do I throw my shield? And like, I focus on like with my fists and like, I concentrate on this one enemy with my fists while the shield kind of takes care of the other guys in the room. But then I got to catch it again. And like, you know, now I'm sure the combat is going to change slightly with like having the shield. Maybe you're slower. Maybe there's just like, you know, maybe you have to play more defensively and stuff. So, um, you know, I, I feel like I got as much as I could get out of it out of just watching someone play, but there's still just a lot of things that like I, I have questions about because I didn't actually get hands on with it, and they weren't like narrating exactly how mechanics worked as I played. Um, aside from like a couple little notes, uh, so overall, like I said, it looks a little janky, but I think it's just like where that game is gonna be at at the stage in development. Like I don't think there's anything to worry about with Avengers. Um, there's gonna be a single player campaign uh, separate from the multiplayer missions that you go on. Um, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, yeah. Any questions? Um, yeah, I mean, um, hmm. like, I, I guess my, my question on that is what would you compare it to the, like the look of it, how it looks like it plays? Um, so I love you know character any- action games. I love I love character I love action games that are combo based. I, I I like Souls Combat, but I don't want everything to have Souls Combat. If there's only one attack button, it really bothers me. I mm-hmm. really like Devil May Cry, God of War, like the old God of Wars, like Ninja mm-hmm. Gaiden, like a like something where there's some combos, there's some light attacks, there's some heavy attacks. Like it's the combat is more in, engaged. Um, and I feel this this looked like it played like that, but of course I didn't actually play it, mm-hmm. so I don't know for sure. Okay, um, it, it might just play like Arkham Asylum, um, but so I want to say it, it kind of feels like um, a Devil May Cry ish combat system, but like you know re- retooled to make sense for these Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I hope that's how it plays, but I don't know. The cooldowns are kind of like I said, it felt like the old God of War cooldowns. I feel like it's going to feel like a combination between God of War and Devil May Cry, like a middle ground between the new God of War and Devil May Cry. Um, but I mean, I, that could be completely wrong. It might play exactly like Batman. Um, but okay. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. Even if it did, like, it, it would be like, okay, well, you know, like, it would just be like, yeah. well, it's. It's just like that. But then again, yeah. it's like, is that system that bad? Right. No, it's not. It's, it's just, just going to be less different. Yeah. Right. It's still a good system. It would just be less different. So my only question now is like, how similar is this to other things? Or does it really try? Because I mean, even though like, even if it's similar to Devil May Cry, the old Devil May Cry games, like that's still different from the type. Yeah, like more games are in the vein of like the Arkham combat. And they are like more heavily combo based PS2 genre, uh, like era stuff. And so mm. like, it would feel different in the fact that like it's more similar to older things, but more different from newer stuff. Uh, but I do think this game's gonna have its own identity. I don't think it's gonna play exactly like anything you've played before. Um, so, and I, I think they are gonna lean into like the individual like Marvel characteristics. I feel like they they took each character. It's like we have to have a consistent baseline. 
mm-hmm. combat. Everyone's got to play similarly enough to an extent just for development logistics and also just so you can switch between characters without having to learn a completely new game. Uh-huh. But then, you know, added upon that by like focusing on like, well, what makes these characters unique? And like, how can we vary the way that they play? And I think if they just like mimic the Arkham or Spider-Man combat system, there's less room to deviate on that. Yeah. So uh, I do think this game, like I have no worries about game like this is day one purchase for sure for me yeah uh i really think they're gonna nail it yeah i I would say i think um like a lot of the criticism that you hear is always like this is what it looks like and it's like Mm -hmm. that's not that's not a bad thing of saying like okay this character doesn't look like the character from the movie you know like that's right that's fine like i personally I, I am a big fan of the direction they went with Thor's costume itself. Hmm. I, I really like it. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people who aren't as like clued into games like mistook this game as like a tie-in to like to the, the, the Avengers live action. Like, right, and it's absolutely game. not. <laughs> yeah, their, their marketing probably dropped the ball with like understanding that the layman is not really going to like realize that this isn't like supposed to be tied in with the movies they've been watching for ten years. Right. Um, I don't actually think if you're not not super into video games, like if you maybe only buy like a couple games a year, you really don't like you know you're not clued into these trade shows and stuff. Like I don't fault you thinking that i think the marketing department probably dropped the ball a little bit on like assuming everyone was just going to know that this was like a brand new avengers um and i think it's just an adjustment phase i don't have any any issue if the way anyone of these avengers look and sound it's just you know i've been hearing the same noises and seeing the same faces for 10 years so like it's just like you know the, there's some gears that have to turn to like you know accept this new reality that we're going to be playing into mm-hmm. so yeah. sure um yeah and i i think yeah, I think the for me the biggest drawback is um, like I, I don't know if there is a character in this list. Like if I had to pick one of the characters, I don't know who I would pick because I'm not a massive fan of a, like any of them. Like mm. I like them all well enough, um, but yeah, I, I um like I, I'm I, I don't identify with any of them. Yeah. Right, I'm kind of saying, but I'm probably going to end up picking just the one that I like playing as the most. Like, I'll probably just play as all of them to figure out, like, yeah. which one I really enjoy playing as the most. I mean, Thor is my favorite of the Avengers, so I'm going to try him first. But I could absolutely see my favorite being someone who, like, I'm not, you know, like, I'm not the biggest Hulk fan. I've never read, like, a Hulk comic or anything, but, like, maybe he just ends up being, like, the one I like playing as the most. So yeah. I kind of, like, I'm... I'm I'm more excited for it because I like don't have a like a, a, a knock out of the park favorite going into it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like you're going it open. Yeah. Yeah. That's um. That 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 definitely has a a really good um like that could be a, definitely a good thing rather than mm-hmm. going in and being like like I know when um like I can play as like the X-Men in Ultimate Alliance. I know that's exactly like they're going to one, one of them is going to end up being my favorite character. Right, sure. it's Wolverine. I don't even I don't care about the other characters. I'm <laughs> only playing Yeah, and it but like with this game like I, I don't even Avenger wise like I would probably go, like if I had to pick like someone who was part of the Avengers to play as that would probably be my favorite. It would still be an, like someone from X-Men. <laughs> Yeah. It would still be like Scarlet Witch, yeah. yeah. But so. yeah, as as far as like if like Iron Man could definitely be the character I like to play as if I can fly around like that. But we don't have all the details, so I can't really say um, like what character I'm excited for. But I am excited for the game for sure. Right? Yeah, it's and I'm like fantastic looking. Like this is kind of like. Um the opposite of like where I'm at with Watch Dogs Legion. Cause Watch Dogs Legion, like give me that game right now to know everything else that I want to know. I'm uh, happy to like learn in game. Yeah. Uh, and like Avengers, it's like, cause I, both these games I'm buying, like I'm buying Legion, I'm buying Avengers, but like Avengers, it's like, I'm, I don't know as much, but I'm so excited for that marketing campaign. Like I'm so excited to see the next time we see this game, like I'm all ears. Yeah. Like, I wonder what know, they like, learned from this. You know, like, like obviously people, like, it can't just be us, us three sitting here going, well, they obviously didn't talk about it and it not being the same thing as this 10-year, like, movie. Right, like, yeah. You know, so, like, I wonder if they learned something from that and they're already, like, working that into, um, like, their marketing somewhere. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure they are. We'll probably get like character trailers, like individual character trailers that like give us the background of like this Tony Stark and, you know, this Bruce Banner yeah. and stuff. Um, but like, yeah, I'm just like the next time this shows up at an event, whether that's a PSX or a state of play or, you know, just like its own, like kind of like, you know, or, you know, event down the road. Like, I'm so excited for the next press conference that this appears in yeah. where I can learn more about this. Um, where it's like Watch Dogs Legion doesn't need to show me another trailer again until the game comes out. Um, mm-hmm. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but uh, so those are all the things I got to see theater demos for. Uh, then I got to play a bunch of games. Uh, I'm going to give uh, a couple of real quick impressions because I just don't have much to say about any of them. Uh, Man of Medan I got to play, but I, nice. I, was, I was I was playing this for a shirt, and then like once I finished the demo, they were out of shirt, so I just got a pin. Um, not that I'm like not interested in this game. Like again, man, Medan day one purchase. Uh, mm-hmm. but like, it's just not the kind of thing I want to play at a trade show. Like this is not yeah demos well at E3. Like it's like a 15 minute demo and like, you really don't get a feel for like what the game is in that 15 minute demo. It's a horror game. And like, it's impossible to be scared when there's like all these fluorescent lights on you and like noise going on from other booths and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not a place that you get immersed in. So, I mean, there's nothing that, like this game is until dawn, but like a dip, but different, you know, it's just like, it's, it's about a different thing. It's about different characters, but like, it's exactly like until dawn mechanically. And so if you're into until dawn, you're into man of Medan. If you're not into until dawn, like this is not going to change your mind. So like, okay. there's really not much else for me to say about it. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I feel like us as just a group, we're definitely down with this. So yeah, we're all fans. Yeah, yeah, we're all big fans. So super excited. Yeah. Um, the, big, the biggest question I have about it because I think these are going to be shorter. Like until dawn was like twelve hours or whatever. Uh-huh. And this is probably going to be like more in like the six hour range. Yeah. And so I wonder, like, I wonder if it being shorter is better for it or if it's worse for it because like there's pros and cons, right? So the pro of it being longer is you have longer for these characters to get attached to them. And like, you know, you ha- the story builds for a longer time. Uh, if it's shorter, like, you know, y- you don't have as much time to really get into each of these characters and like, maybe you don't care as much if they die and stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, like this, there's possibilities for your choices to be more, wide reaching and have more ripple effects because they don't have as long of a game for these choices. Like until dawn, like you, you can't really make a whole lot of choices in the beginning that really, really affect stuff because they have, you know, a whole game they still have to like get through and stuff. So yeah. like, your choices can only butterfly so much, but if it's a shorter game, maybe each choice can like have more of an impact. Yeah. So, um, That's I, awesome. I am curious. Yeah. Uh, I got to play uh, B- borderlands three, um so i'm not a huge borderlands fan nothing against it's just like not really my my type of deal um Mm -hmm. and but i played this because they had great like swag to give out like they get they gave me a mask and like a bag full of like posters and like other goodies and stuff so a lot of stuff i choose to play at e3 it's 50 percent what i'm interested in and 50 percent like what are you giving me for seeing this (laughs) um like uh Watch Dogs legion gave me like one of their pig masks and so like that's probably oh that's nice. cool <laughs> so um uh what i will say about borderlands 3 though is it um it mechanically it's solid it's just like a fun shooter like the shooting mechanics in this game are just like well built it feels good to fire a gun but um the biggest takeaway from this uh game is how beautiful it is this game is gorgeous looking and uh i mean that their shell shade style always look good but like just you know next gen really bumped up just like the quality of those textures and stuff and also shout out to the borderlands booth for like understanding like the scenario in which i'm experiencing this game um like all e3 booths you're standing which sucks like except uh um iceborne they actually like provide people stools which like yes good like make me comfortable nice. while i'm experiencing yeah, your game yeah. for the first time every other booth makes you stand which is already annoying but since you're standing you're like two maybe three feet away from the tv that you're playing this on and for whatever reason every single like uh presenter wants to bring these big old like 32 inch tvs um have you stand two feet away from them and i swear they're not super great quality tvs like square enix is especially bad at this their tvs (laughs) suck and so like the first time i'm seeing these games i'm super excited for like kingdom hearts and final fantasy 7 I'm seeing like I can yeah. see the pixels in the TV. Like this is probably a 720p <laughs> TV. Any Ellising is terrible. Like there's Jesus. artifacting everywhere. Like it's not a good visual first impression of this game. That's um, so weird. 
Borderlands <laughs> understood that like provide people with a computer monitor because those are things that you're meant to view from like a couple feet away and they're smaller by design. So it's maybe like a 14 inch computer monitor. But because of that, I can't see the pixels. Like I got as close to the screen and I could not see the pixels. I think it was a 4K monitor. So like this looked crystal fucking clear and was like such a beautiful experience. Like it's like walking through this and just looking at the environments. Um, everyone, please just provide 4K computer monitors. Um, Super and, weird that they wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> and, hey, come um, check out our awesome stuff on this shitty fucking 1992. Yeah. Meanwhile, fucking <laughs> Devolver Digital has a uh, fucking 4K monitors everywhere for their pixel art games, and they're smashing it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also going to say that this game's got cool boss fights. I didn't play the other Borderlands games, so I don't know how their boss fights were. Mm. But this one, I, it was really cool. Like, uh, So the boss fight um, was in this like room lined with speakers. And like there was like outlines on the floor denoting like the speaker range. And so like, you would see the speakers build up, and you had to get out of range. Because if you didn't, the speakers would like send you flying across the room and uh like hurt you and stuff and then the boss had a shield and like there were audio levels on the shield so like as noise was going on around the room like you would just see the audio levels like spiking and stuff and it was a really cool boss fight it felt like those old like playstation 2 platformer like arena battles and stuff like where you like ratchet and clank and like sly cooper and like what i assume banjo kazooie was like and stuff where it's like there was like this phased boss fight that like had a really unique gimmick for each like arena that you're in and you were fighting and like there was a cool mechanic to themed with like the boss's personality and stuff yeah um so cool ideas going on in borderlands 3 uh um night swarm you said that you you were a fan of borderlands so like you, you stoked about this game i'm mm. very excited actually uh filter and i both just ran through the first borderlands yeah, uh cool. planning to jump into the pre-sequel which um not as good um okay and you know just kind of like the, with the first game, we ran through, we were kind of doing everything, and we're like, why the fuck are we doing everything? Like, we know <laughs> what happens in the game. Let's just run through and play the story. And so mm-hmm. we skipped a lot of the side missions and went through the main game, and, uh, like, while we've been waiting, I jumped on, and I was like, I'm really close to platinuming this again. I platinumed it the first <laughs> time on PS3. And yeah. So, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, working on that, and... Um, it, it's fun. There's a lot of problems with the first game, even the remaster, which we were playing. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm a- incredibly excited. The the characters. I think the thing I'm probably most excited for is someone who can control some sort of pet. Mm-hmm. Um, in the character Flack, um, because Mordecai was the character I played in the first game, and then the second game they gave us Zero kind of as a replacement. Okay. And yeah. He's like a ninja. Yeah, and I did not. Uh, I I did not like that character. Mm. Um, like he was cool in the sense of like what he could do, but it just wasn't the character that I like to play as from Borderlands. Just wasn't like represented in mm. two or the pre sequel, to be honest. Cool. So yeah, and uh, this one looks like it's got really cool mechanics uh, as far as like you know things that like would make the experience elevated. Uh, they gave us a little theater demo before we actually got to play it, and like it's uh, one of the cool things is uh, there's the, the vending machines where you buy weapons and stuff are uh, connected if you're friends list. So like if uh, if Night Swarm, if you sold a shotgun to the vending machine, uh, filter cord, you could go to your vending machine and like it would pop up and be like, filter cord, cord sold this to the vending machine. Do you want to oh, buy sure. it? That's cool. So you can like buy yeah, that's really cool. Each that's other brand new. Yeah. yeah, nice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there, there's a lot I'm excited for um, for this game. It's definitely like a day. It's it's a day one purchase for me, and I don't know if it is for everyone else that I plan on playing this game with, which is yeah. uh you know i don't know if that's good or bad but i'm fine with playing this game solo for sure cool cool so uh then next i got to play biomutant hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah thq nordic booth man i felt so bad because like yeah there really wasn't a whole playing it so i just like i just i walked up to biomutant i didn't there see a line anywhere there's playing like, it there's like well, three open stations. that hurts Biomutant's been like on the radar for a long time, yeah. so I think that would probably play into people not being like as excited for it. Sure. Yeah, maybe well, they I'll, just I'll, don't know yeah. about it yet. Yeah. Like, I mean, once the game, once the general population gets in, there's a line for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
is there a line for this? He's like, no, you can just jump on. I'm like, cool. So yeah, I got to play. Played 15 minutes of the demo. Um, that's, that's it was on a timer. It was just like there's a mission to get as far as you can. 15 minutes. Um, uh, super fun. Uh, so you're you cre- you create your raccoon. Uh, I think they want you to make like as ugly of a raccoon as you can. But I tried <laughs> super hard to make him cute, and it was pretty difficult. So um, <laughs> you can customize like his fur style, his face, and like the fur colors. Um, so I made him like blue and purple. Uh, and uh, basically, like this world, I believe this world is Earth, but it's just been like destroyed by pollution. And like, so there's a lot of like gross, corrupted monsters that are kind of just like killing all like the rest of the wildlife. And so, like, your job as the bio mutant is to like go and like try and try and clean up the Earth and like take back the world. So you're killing the super mutated creatures and you're like cleaning up pollution and stuff. And uh, like, the characters don't really talk. Uh, but in order to give context to the world and what you're doing, there's a super jolly narrator. Uh, and he sounds like, you know, he's not the narrator from Little Big Planet, but imagine that type of cadence, that kind of like right. upbeat attitude about the world. Like that's the yeah. narrator's vibe. Love it. Um, and it's super <laughs> yeah. fun. It, his narration never got old. Uh, it also kind of acts as like a, um, a uh, guide to the player. Like if you're unsure what to do, he'll be like, and the biomutant seemed confused from this area and uh, turned his attention to the red door. And it was like, it's like <laughs> the red door is where you're supposed to go. That's um, really good. And, uh, and just like the enemy variety was really cool. Like they got rid of like the creatures and stuff that you do. Mm. Um, at what point this jo- like one of the bosses you fight, he like picks you up and he swallows you and you're in the stomach of him. And you have to like climb up the side of his stomach while avoiding like the stomach acid and stuff to get out. Um, uh, and then, uh, it's um you pilot a mech at one point and you're walking through with the mech and you use the mech to like slurp up like pollution and things and you can customize it a little bit so like you can like build this mech to be like your mech um nice uh, there are other creatures that you talk to like that you actually like you have conversation trees and i can't remember if like i think the animals are just going like i i i, I think oh and then I don't you see the- like text and that's translated Right, yeah, because I don't remember there being any vo- voices other than the narrator, but you do talk to other creatures, uh, and, like, there's, like, there was, you know, there were certain things that you could, like, I didn't super explore the dialogue options, because it's, like, I, I don't think you make choices necessarily, but it's the kind of thing, it's like, hello, I'm the, like, guy of this area, like, what do you want to know? And you can just, like, ask him a whole bunch of, like, questions, but I was, you know, I only had 15 minutes, so I was, like, I didn't really explore all that too much, I kind of just, like, got through the dialogue I need to get through to keep moving on um you have a range attack a range weapon and a melee weapon and it changes out and like um you know upgrade them and stuff like that you can make a mucus bubble that you can use to bounce around so like he just like he encases himself in this like ball of mucus <laughs> and then you can like bounce like great feats and distances like uh and then you can also use your mucus bubble as kind of like a katamari and you can roll around and just like pick enemies up and stuff. And then when you do your next bounce, it'll like send them all flying out. So um, just in this 15 minute demo, it introduced so many cool like mechanics and moves and stuff that uh, just makes me think this game is just gonna be packed with ideas and packed with like interesting, um, you know, abilities and creative mechanics and things like that. Uh, the combat itself wasn't super. Like a lot of the variety in the combat comes from like when you dodge and when you attack and. Like, how to use your special abilities, but the combat itself was just what, the square button for melee attacks and like the triangle button for uh, ranged attacks, and then just kind of like you know moving between those and dodging and using your other abilities and stuff kind of made up like the combat of the game. But it was super fun and engaging the whole time. So, any bio mutant questions? No, I, for me, I think I've yeah. seen pretty much everything. When's the fucking see? release date? Yeah, I, I don't know. Is that announced yet? No, I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it like that's the biggest thing. It's like when can I play this game? Because we've seen what it's like to create the character. We've seen I think like the first mission that they kind of run through. It seemed like very tutorial uh, like tutorial heavy. And then as well, I think they released like a 15 or 20 minute gameplay demo. Mm-hmm. Like that that I I know I've seen. Um mm-hmm. but I mean, I think most of my questions would come from like what is it like to uh, like what what has changed if anything but i, I don't expect um, you to know exactly from what i've seen personally 
to know what's changed on what you saw or played. Right. Now, I mean, I, I can only tell you about like my what my perception was going in versus what I played. And I don't know if this is just for the demo or what this game is, but I thought the game was open world. And as far as I can tell, it is not. Uh, mm. The section I played was fully mm. linear. Uh, but again, I don't know if that's because I was on a particular mission specifically for the C3 demo or if, you know, yes. the whole world might be explorable. And then once you're on a mission, it kind of you kind of just like go down like a linear path to get to the end of that mission and like it opens up the world again. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, the section I played was entirely linear. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it, they, they did kind of um, lay it out as like, hey, check this out. This does seem open world. Uh, but okay. yeah, now that I'm thinking back on it, I don't think they ever specifically said if it was an open world or linear game. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, either way. Um. So that was Biomutant. Uh, now we're down to the last two. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot I got to play. Oh, cool. Nice. Um, uh, so, are you guys big Dragon Ball Z fans? No. A little. But this okay. looks super dope. Okay. I already have I'm a big, big Dragon question, Ball Z fan. but we'll, I'll okay. let you go through and see what happens. Can I fuck Frieza? <laughs> Probably not. He has a big um, question. So... God damn it. I, I was super excited for this game going in, and it doesn't quite live up to my expectations. Uh, this game is probably going to be high sevens, low eights. This is a like solid swimming in sevens. Like I don't think it's going to be a bad game, but it doesn't. It's not going to reach the heights that I want it to be. It's not going to be like it's not going to be the grand RP Dragon Ball Z RPG that I really dreamed it could be. It's got a good budget for an anime game. You know what I mean? Like this is probably the best scenario you could hope for as far as this game. But like keep expectations tempered, keep them in check. Um, so it's, uh, it is the Dragon Ball Z story. I don't know how far it goes. I don't know if it ends at freezer, or if it goes farther than that. Um, but, uh, you know, that game would probably be pretty short if it was just Dragon Ball Z story. So what they've done is they've taken plot lines from other parts of the Dragon Ball universe, like Dragon Ball and things like that. And they've kind of interwoven those to be side quests. So when you're ro- roaming around the world and stuff, you'll see like a character who has only appeared in Dragon Ball and Goku will go up and he'll be like, oh, hi, Nam, I haven't seen you in ages. And he's like, oh, cool, Goku, I haven't seen you since you were a kid. Hey, my village is having a problem with this. Do you think you could go help me out? Uh, and so there are three side quests you could do in the demo and then one boss fight. And I, the, all the side quests were pretty similar. It's usually just like, go here and collect this for me or go here and kill that for me. And so I, I am worried that there's not going to be a whole lot of deviation in like the types of side quests that you do and stuff like that. It's going to be restricted in that sense. Um, the actual cutscenes are voiced, uh, I, and although they might just be lifted straight, the audio straight from the anime, I'm not sure if they re-recorded any dialogue, but there's no dial, there's no voice acting on the side quests and stuff. Goku will just be like, hi, and then, like, he'll just, like, you just read text boxes, and then, like, so they have, like, they're like, okay. hi, okay, bye, and, you know, but there's yeah, no actual VO in between, which is a little disappointing, but I, I guess I don't know what I was expecting. Um... Exploring the world seems fun enough. Uh, the controls are super weird at first. Like flying does not, it doesn't fly like you're supposed to fly. Like Anthem had a lot of problems, but at least like flying in that game felt exactly how you want it to feel. Uh, flying in this game is just, it's kind of awkward. It's going to take some getting used to. So you like raise, you raise in a lower elevation with like the triggers. And so it's just, it just, it takes a lot of getting used to. It's, it's a little weird. I'm sure it will like become more natural over time, but I, I kind of wish it just, all the movement was done at the analog sticks. Um, and um, uh, there's the world was big and was big enough. And there was definitely like things to see and do uh, how engaging that open world is going to be over the time. I can't really comment on the entire game is not open world. Uh, each area there is broken into regions. And okay. if you want to like go from like the desert to like the grasslands, you like leave the region and Goku goes, he flies up like super high into the atmosphere. And then you just kind of like select the next space you want to go into. Then Goku flies back in and now you're just in that area. Um, they said this was done for story reasons, but I, I have a feeling it's really just due to technical limitations. Yeah. Um, and so, but once you're in that area, the area is huge and there's a lot to see and explore. Um, there's kind of like, this is, this is kind of bothers me. There's kind of like random encounters. Um, so as you're flying through, like enemies will just kind of pop up and you just, you fight them. I kind of wish they were just like already on the field. I don't, I don't like random encounters. Um, but there's just like some robots and stuff from like the original dragon ball and you fly around and, uh, the combat is relatively, the combat it's, I have, um, 
I have uh, I have some reservations about the combat. Um, but I, I think like so like I had fun with what was there. My only question is like long term, how does the combat evolve? How interesting does it get? Does it get a little repetitive? Um, I think the bigger problem was like some of the random enemies just had like their health bars were just like a little too big. You know, like they could be like 30% smaller and this fights would feel like a lot more engaging, a lot snappier. Um like some some fights just like this is kind of like you're just pounding on the same enemy for a while. But like so there's an attack button and there's a Kai but like a key button like to use energy attacks. And then there's a button to like charge up like your because everything that you, every special attack and every Kai attack takes up your energy and then you have to like charge that back up. Uh just like they do in Dragon Ball Z, like you have to power up to like raise that key bar up again. Um and so uh then you hold down like L1 and it pulls up like a list of attacks like the Kamehameha wave and like special uppercuts and things like that. And so I assume as you go through, you unlock like more key abilities and more like special moves and things like that, that like alter the way that you play. Um, but the game was just, it was a balance of like, you know, dodging, like a lot of the fights are like fought in the air and stuff. And so it's, since it is like kind of like an open area type thing, it was cool to like begin a fight, you know, in one area and then end that fight, like, you know, a mile down the thing, just cause like you're punching each other and like, some of the attacks like will send you flying and stuff. So like you really do relocate um, and you, you feel like there are no boundaries to this fight that you're taking place in. Um, you have to like, you have to like uh, dash in and like get your punches in and dodge out of the way. And then, you, you know, try and figure out when you want to use your key abilities and stuff, because like if the enemy's too far away, like they're just going to dodge out of the way and miss. And so uh, there's some cool scenes from the anime that you can kind of recreate with the Kamehameha way. You like the longer you charge that up, like the more powerful it is, but then the longer they have to move out of the way. So sometimes you would just charge up, you would fire and they would dodge. And then like that happens a lot in the anime. And it's always like, ah, I use all that energy. Um, and uh, so like, I would like to like, like go dash in, get a couple punches into kind of stagger them. And then like come a away from like really close. Um, then you could do like this, uh, this cool, like, um, like downward punch that would just like send them into the ground. Like there'd be like a crater. And then you could like dash in and like hit them some more while they're on the, um, and so when, the, when I really got a hang of the fighting system, it was really fun and it felt like I was recreating fights from the anime. Um, but it was a lot of fun. The boss fight it was less fun just when I was like fighting individual enemies, uh, just cause like the fights were just taking a little too long. Uh, but as an RPG, you can level up, so that might be alleviated later. But, uh, yeah, so overall, like, I think it's going to be a fun game. I don't think it's going to be a revolutionary RPG and like, it's not going to be quite as like polished and detailed as like i was really wanting this game to be uh my biggest question is about are like how the cities are handled and stuff like i want to go to like major metropolises and see a bunch of people walking around right. the street and see fl cars flying by and i want to be able to go into shops and like interact with the world itself um it was a little hard to tell because i was just like in the wilderness and there was some like villages and stuff but like there wasn't a whole lot to interact with so um, you know, I still have a lot of questions, but I, I, I'm starting to temper my expectations for it. I'm a little trepidatious, but, uh, you know, still, still optimistic. Yeah. I, like for me, my biggest question was what was that, um, like the open regions, what is that like? That's the biggest question that I had. What did that feel like? Um, uh, like I, I, I look at this and I just immediately compare it to, uh, that hidden leaf Naruto game that was open kind of open region okay. in a similar yeah. fashion. And I want it to be like that. Um, or, I, I believe that was CyberConnect 2, which is who's making this. So I, I assume it's going to be very, very similar. Yeah, I, and, and I'll, I'll be I'll be fine with that. Um, but I, I don't know. If, if, there, if there's not a lot of, like... Um, like, I would like to see more, like, urban-focused stuff that's happening. I, right. I, I yeah, really no, like yeah. I really like um, you know like seeing what they can do with that like I don't know it does kind of go back to that Naruto running through the uh, running through the village and up like up walls and getting like the high vantage point of like where am I going now and then just like hopping across the rooftops or you know wherever you need to go um, but yeah i don't know and and it does kind of bum me out a little bit to hear you say that the flying was uh uh you know just slightly not what you wanted it to be because i it looked great i was like this is yeah that's gonna be awesome but i don't know now i'm kind of ha now i have a little bit more um 
like reservation about about the game. Yeah, like I said, I think it'll be fun, but just temper your expectations. And I mean, maybe it like rise it to a level beyond what you're initially expecting. Um, and that's you know you can only be impressed by that. But uh, I would say assume this game is going to be a seven point eight. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Cool. I don't think Filter was too excited no, for that one. I, yeah, I, it's it's interesting or whatever, and I think actually more games should do a similar thing of like, you know, here's a retelling of something that you know and you can kind of change it and do new things with it as you want. But I don't know, this just isn't one that really captures me. Is the last thing you play that we're going to talk about here, Luigi's Mansion? No. Damn. Um, <laughs> the last thing that I play that we're going to talk about is my game show, my most exciting, my most anticipated game for 2020. Oh, the the crown jewel, as far as I'm concerned, and that is of course Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. The uh, man. So what I pre- like, they had the best booth by far. We'll get into the Luigi Manson booth and Luigi Manson booth is cool. I got to see the inside of it, but um, I didn't actually get to play the game. Um, but the Final Fantasy VII booth was dope because they treated this like a universal theme park ride. So mm. we, what you would do is like everything was themed in world. When you got your ticket to come back later, it was a Shinra train ticket. You got it from a train booth. Oh, and nice. so then you came back and was you're waiting in line, like the Shinra employees, like the ticket takers were all like, they never broke character. They were like pretending like they were like in the world of this thing. And so like, they were kind of rude to you and like purposefully and like, they would take your ticket and stuff. And then they would just like, you know, they would be cagey about answering questions and stuff. And they would refer to like any game things like Phoenix downs and potions. Like they were like very good at not breaking character. And then, um, they uh once you actually got into the train station uh have you guys ever been on the terminator 2 experience at universal studios in orlando yes uh i think so it was exactly like that nice. you know so in that one like the skynet like commercial starts and then it's like yeah, interrupted yeah, by yeah. Shara connor this yeah. was like thank you for boarding shinra rails shinra at shinra we're a company that and they started like going into this whole spiel like they showed like this like fake commercial for like shinra products and people being super happy about shinra and then it was hacked into by avalanche and it was jesse and she was like talking directly to you she was like are, are you the new avalanche recruits that barrett was talking about okay great here's the mission and like she broke down the tutorial for like how you play the game what the controls were and stuff like in the universe of the game in the world of the game uh by like explaining um you know explaining things uh but still like referencing like real like world stuff that like made sense within the midgar like universe and final Fantasy seven universe and stuff um, and then when it was over, she was like, okay, great. So like, you're, you're going to help him on the bombing mission. And that's like all the time I have. And they like cut out and they like played the end of the Shinra commercial. Then you went into the booth itself. They had like one of the big Shinra reactors, but like there wasn't, you know, the booth didn't have like a whole bunch of like, you know, pipes and like machinery and stuff like to emulate like the inside of the Shinra area. It was really just like that introduction was just so cool. And like they created that video specifically for E3. You know what I mean? That's not like part of a trailer they're going to show later. Yeah, that's um, really cool. That's good. Uh, and then I got to play the game. It's 15 minutes. I got to play 15 minutes of it, about five minutes of like fighting up to the boss fight. And then like I got to play the boss fight against this big scorpion. Um, and oh my God, there's this like very few times do things just like meet your expectations at the level you're expecting them to be at. Like everything about this game just felt perfect. The combat is a perfect mix of uh, real time and uh, turn based of like really like feels like an evolution of that active time battle system that they introduced so many years ago in this game. Um, And the action combat felt super smooth cloud animates beautifully. um, And like, it feels really good just to like hit the square button and attack. And then you, you can dodge out of the way and re- attacks in real time. And then you just, you hit that X button. Everything slows down to like that cool slow-mo. You select your abilities. You can like queue up abilities for your, uh, for your allies, or you can switch directly to your allies. You can switch them anytime you switch them in real time. Um, and then like, there is reasons to switch beyond just playing as other characters. So for example, like there'll be some enemies that are like up on like balconies and stuff and like cloud physically can't get to them. And so you switch to Barrett and then you like, you take out the guys that are like in the hard to reach places. Cause Barrett has a Gatling gun. Um, and just, it was just so, 
like the combat just felt good. Like it felt like a perfect mix of strategy and action. And then everything about this thing just felt so polished. Like it felt like so good. Um, there's like parts of 15 that like 15 is a game I enjoy, but like so much of it just feels like unfinished and unrefined and like, mm-hmm. just like the attention to detail just was not quite there. Weird, this buddy. game spares no expense in its detail in just this one, like boss fight, like the first boss in the game, like he's got like three phases. There's cutscenes in between each phase. The yeah. camera does really interesting movements as the characters like moving around and stuff. Uh, whenever cloud is having his like, like episodes like mental breakdowns like you see what cloud's seeing and you see like the hallucinations and stuff and all of it just it feels so cinematic it feels so good like it everything that you want to be in there is in there like you never feel like you're like ah but if only they had like had a cooler transition between this phase and that phase like no it's it's there it looks great the characters will talk to each other in the manner that like they do in like uncharted or last of us like this is you're walking around the reactor like getting down to where you're going to plant the bomb like barrett and cloud will just banter back and forth and like they do such a good job with it because at this point in the game like they do not like each other and you really get that vibe when they're talking to each other uh when they're in battle they'll comment on each on things and they'll like shout out like different like things or like i think that's the weak point or like you know like oh man like uh one above you barrett and like stuff like that and then the coolest part was when i was actually in the boss fight i was playing as barrett and uh the scorpion was like concentrating his fire on cloud and so he sent like this missile barrage to cloud and like i I couldn't quite see cloud but like i imagine he was like running away from the missile barrage and you just heard cloud from off screen go oh shit (laughs) just like as the missiles are flying towards him um and it's like so the character's like commenting and reacting to like what is going on in the battle in a realistic way and it just it feels so immersive it feels so good uh it feels like what you imagine that game to look like like back in 1997 like it's it is a perfect reimagining of what that game was and just demo alone like justified to me why it's being broken up into parts why midgar is its own game why this game why like why a five-hour section from the original game is now like a full-length 40-hour game on two discs on two blu-ray right. discs like that's crazy and like just Massive. this 15 minute this 15 minute slice like justified to me if everything in this game is to the level of quality to the level of polish and to the level of detail is this 15 minute demo like all of this makes sense now and like it, it I, I i love it this way so it, I, it was incredible game of show i cannot wait to get my hands on it more um but uh yeah um you guys have any questions um uh yeah what's the like um so th- this was a uh i guess a guided demo or did you get to play oh i got to play it. yeah I yeah play so it. it's it's like kind of like a um i don't know you're doing like um you know manually triggering most of your attacks like a sort of i don't want to say devil may cry like stylish but each button press is an attack right for the most part so um sort of so you have so square is your regular like your slash like it's you mm. swinging the sword uh and for barrett it's firing the gun and then triangle uh is kind of like a uh, situational like sometimes it's like a different attack but it's also like a form shift that kind of just like changes the way the character plays in general oh, okay kind of like um kingdom hearts in that way yeah and then um then you press x and then you have your access to your magic and your abilities and stuff so every time you swing your sword and you attack it builds a little bit of atb gauge atb gauge will build just constantly over time but you build it faster by attacking and then once an atb Mm. gauge is filled you press x and then you select you have special abilities that like do different things so like maybe some of them like cast like status effects or some of them just like hit like a wider range of enemies or like does like a, a super aggressive like type of attack that like you know like a slash attack that like might do more damage to a certain type of enemy type. Um, or you choose magic. Um, so like during the boss fight, this is important because like the boss is weak to electricity. So like Barrett had an electrical magic attack. And so you'd want to anytime Barrett fill up his ATB gauge, you'd want to use that. But Barrett also had cures. So you have to like, you know, balance when you're attacking and when you're using your, your healing and stuff. Um, uh, items uh also take up an atb slot so if you want to use potion uh you have to use an atb slot but if you're outside of battle then it uh you can just use them normally same thing for healing magic um and uh but if you 
So if you want to get tactical and you want to really think about what, what move you're going to use next and how you want to use those ATB slots, um, that's when you, you press square or press X to pause it, look through the menus, figure out what you want to do. You can queue up the abilities for your partner. Uh, or if you feel like you really got a hang of it and you really understand your abilities and you, uh, you don't really need to think it out too much, you can hotkey them just like in Kingdom Hearts to holding down L1 and then you just, you know, the face buttons just become a different thing. Oh, so, cool. you know, if you want to use Braver and you know what Braver does and you know exactly like that's what you want to use, you queue it into like L1 square and then in the middle of a fight, you got an ATB gauge filled up, you just L1 square and then you use that different type of attack. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. Did they go wow. into um, how they're separating the discs? No. So um, uh, I, I assume that it will work like Red Dead Redemption, where uh, one disc is just an install disc, and then the other we play off of. Okay. Um, but I, I could be wrong. They didn't talk about that at all. Uh, they they actually, in, um, as far as like how the whole game will be broken up, they don't even know yet. So um, they don't know how much like how far into the story this like remake two is going to take you into that. What they're kind of doing is they have a rough idea of how they're breaking it up, but they're letting each area expand naturally. So like the original plan wasn't to make the first game all take place in Midgar, but they just, as they were developing it, they had so many ideas and so many things that they wanted to do and so much detail they wanted to add to this one place. It became its own game. And yeah. so that's kind of what the way they're going to go into the rest of them instead of being like, well, these are great ideas, but we have to cut them because like we have to get through this much of the story. Like they're just going to be like, okay, well, like what's, you know, basically the opposite of like, you know, what happens in game design typically like a lot of stuff gets on the cutting room floor it's very much just like nothing's getting cut like everything is going into this game and then when the disc is filled up we just that's where the game ends it's a remake so, it's a remake and kind of a retelling you know of, yes like we want you to be able to experience everything you've experienced final fantasy 7 we yeah. want you to be able to experience everything about final fantasy 7 right they're oh, they're cool. building onto everything parts of midgar will be explored they'll never be that were never explorable before like there's new side quests with like that expand on the avalanche members and like Jesse and big, uh, Biggs. uh w- Biggs and wedge Biggs. all have like, you know, way more dialogue and or way bigger story. And there's, there's going to be a lot just in yeah. this one section. So I, I could not be more excited. It's just like, it's just like they just, every box on a checklist, they just like big old, huge check on every single one. Like there's nothing about this game that I'm like, ah, oh, I wish they had done that. Or I'm worried about this. It's like, I think this game is going to be exactly what we've all wanted ever since that PS3 tech demo. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's, really, that's really awesome to hear. Um, cool. So, it, I mean, it. a lot of people that I've heard talk about it, they're like, yeah, definitely Final Fantasy VII was, uh, was the, the best thing at the show. The best, like, new thing. We haven't really seen this yet. Um, yeah, right. There's been a lot of things we've seen and that we're excited for and that we're still extremely excited for, um, but when it comes down to the end, like the end of the day, uh, I, like the way I always like to think is like what was what was surprising? What was something that I didn't expect to see that I saw? What was something that I really wanted to see and saw? And then mm-hmm. what was still there and what's continuing to be amazing? And saw. Yeah, I, I was not expecting to, to play Final Fantasy 7. Like before E3 started, I expected we'd see more from it, but I didn't expect to play it. Um, so, mm-hmm. I mean, that was a surprise in itself. Sure. Um, I didn't get to go on Luigi Mansions. Uh, I didn't get to play Luigi's Mansion, but like they had probably the coolest booth um, as far as set design goes. Um, I saw the inside of it, and it looks like the Haunted Mansion ride from Disney. Like there are like nice. guys floating everywhere. The whole place like looks like the inside, like the lobby of like a like an old abandoned hotel. There's like there was clocks and like like cool like set decoration that's just like really themes with the area. Um, like I said, like the 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 poltergeist is like projection of the poltergeist is like floating around and stuff look wonderful. There was a cool chandelier. Uh, all the people are dressed in like bellhop uniforms. Um, so that was that was that was really cool set design. Um, they also had that goo oh, goo Ouija outside, right? Ouija. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, there wasn't. I mean, there was. Guys, this year's E three as far as like show floor stuff. A lot of booths were like really toned down, toned back. Um, 
uh, playing Final Fantasy VII was a huge surprise. Uh, there was really nothing that I really wanted to do that I didn't get to do. Um, okay. So yeah. there's nothing there's nothing else on the show floor that was like, ah, I wish I had checked that out. Um, I mean, I wish I would have played Luigi Mansion 3, but like, I got to see the inside of the booth, and that's kind of what I cared about more. Um, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, oh, 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 no, I have something. I have something that's like, this is... I was not expecting this, and it's super cool. So uh, the Fortnite booth. Mm-hmm. So Fortnite, Fortnite had a huge booth there, which first of all, like Epic showing up and having a huge Fortnite booth is just a flex. Like, yeah. it's like they're not selling anything. They really don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we have extra but, money. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like they're just showing up to stunt on people and it's really funny, but it's great because um, since like their game is free to play and you just go home and play it right there, they didn't make their whole booth about playing the game. Um, they instead used a lot of their booth just as like they had like the the battle bus and it was like decked out with, like cool neon stuff. They had popcorn machines just giving out free popcorn. Oh yeah, they had, did uh, they have a mechanical llama? Sort of. They had that last year. Okay. This year they did something arguably cooler. So they had this giant inflatable like octagonal platform with like eight different like pedestals and oh, a rotating like like foamed beam that would like <laughs> rotate around and you had to jump over it you had to jump over one side and duck under the other side and if you fell down three times like you were out and so they would get a bunch of people to go and then they would you know, start the thing and you would you would just you would jump over the thing and it was so fun it was cool there's a lot of cool like physical stuff this year like uh mario and sonic at the olympic games had a rock wall you could climb um you know cool. fortnite had this like spinning like jumpy thing uh, and it was so fun to do, and it just like it really helps break up like standing in line and walking around and stuff. Um, and like all the physical attractions didn't have huge lines because a lot of people like weren't there to do physical things. So it, you know you could easily get into this and like experience this, and you do it a couple times if you wanted to. Uh, nice. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was really hard to actually like stand up because the whole thing is just inflatable. So you you get down the platform, and the platform like wiggles and stuff, so it could it's put like, you off balance. Yeah, standing on a bunch of pillows or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. and so that was something I did not expect, and like really impressed me. And I was like, "That's so cool! I really hope we do more of that stuff going forward." Especially if you don't have anything to actually show. Like a lot of people come, and like it's like you, we don't have this playable, or we don't necessarily have any a thing that we're demoing. Uh, but we want you to still like experience things at this booth. Like they usually put up statues or something like that. Like really, like treat these like universal rides and like really try and theme things super appropriately yeah. and like have these kind of like attractions and stuff that aren't necessarily playing a game that still like help promote your thing. Um, Cause yeah, like the Fortnite booth I've been telling everyone about, it's not even a game. They weren't selling me a product and it's not like a game I'm going to check out, but it's like still good press for Fortnite. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so that was cool. Uh, and I can tell you this. So there's, as far as like, I guess we'll transition to kind of like the booth themselves. Um, there, the booths were all really dialed back this year. Even Bethesda usually goes all out, like really, really dialed back what they had. Um, and so there's really not a whole lot of booths to really focus on, except for one anomaly, anomaly that has nothing to do with video games, but it mm-hmm. ended up being like the booth I have the most to say about. So, do you have any questions about any specific booths or any like anyone else's like presentations or anything before I get into the anomaly booth? anomaly um i mean there was a bunch of weird stuff i saw from the floor um mm-hmm. that i would like to know more about but i don't know what they're called specifically <laughs> sure like there was some like arcade machine like vendors and stuff that had, I, like arcade machines set up and... i did see that they're like the one-up arcade is doing a turtles in time mm-hmm. and i straight up like yeah, i they'd... told ashley is like i swear to christ if i see that anywhere we're gonna drop a cool of like three fifty on it. Like, not yeah, even a like question. The, and I, I like I'll go and check because I know they have them at like Walmart. And like yeah. sometimes I'll, I'll walk by and I'll be like, "You dodged a bullet today." Like I don't even know when it comes out. Yeah. Um. And then uh, they had like I think it was like for some X Men arcade game. They had like a giant arcade. Oh yeah. Flight of stairs to like play on. Nice. Um, I love uh, playing on stairs. <laughs> uh, there was um. There's a bunch, yeah. There's a bunch of just like weird stuff that's like I couldn't even like describe them to you. There was just like a bunch of third party like accessories like things and like Geico had a booth there and it's like Geico Gaming and I'm like I don't even know what Geico Gaming is. Uh, like why are you at E3? Uh, there was a whole bunch of like there was um a uh there was a company that basically sold like Switch style Joy Cons for your cell phone so you could like play with analog sticks and stuff cell phone games. Um, yeah, just like a lot of weird third party companies. Uh. 
There was the shady back alleys, which were always there. But like, th this is how sparse of an E3 there was. It's like there was like there was a U.S. Army booth mm. um, that weird. they were just like actively like trying to recruit people wow, in E3 to join the U.S. Army. And guess what they game? Get 360 no scoped in real life. <laughs> guess what game you could play at the U.S. Army booth? Oh no! Uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh. Mortal Kombat. What the it's surprising. Fuck? That was they completely fucked it. Not what I expected. I was gonna say uh, America's Army. Um, no, no, no. We were combat. Um, fair, fair. Completely fucked it. There was one game. Oh my god! There was one game that's. It was so funny because I was walking around with one of my friends, and it was Rock League, but mm. without cars. Rollerblades. So it's soccer. No, like you're just running around. But like it's soccer, fuck? we're just with a giant ball because the ball is still huge, and like it looked exactly like Rocket League. Like That's the right. environments, like the orange and blue goals, everything, it, but just replace cars with people running around. Could you do so it soccer <laughs> with like a giant ball? Can you imagine working that booth? Someone's like, So you're telling me it's just Rocket League with just people? They're like, No, no, it's completely different. And then they explain right, yeah. it and it's just Rocket League with people. And you're just like, right, Like I said before. So it's soccer. No, 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 the ball's huge. No, no, so no, it's no. not soccer. <laughs> uh huh. Oh. Uh, so, All right, just give me a shirt. Uh, I want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, there was some haptic oh, feedback VR jacket. So, like, I got to play nice. a couple of VR games where uh, you, uh, I had like a haptic jacket on, uh, and like I got to play like a rhythm game that was really fun. Like, it vibrated to the beat of the game, and I got to play a first-person shooter and like it vibrated depending on like where you got hit. Um, so it's really cool. That's pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, and then. Um, Let's get into this anomaly booth. Yeah, the anomaly mm -hmm. booth. Okay, so are you guys familiar with Bang Energy? Yes. Uh, yes, I've tried their energy drinks and I'm not a fan. I was going to say Bang Energy is when you're like really horny, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, so Bang um, <laughs> is a, what I thought was an energy drink. It's not an energy drink. Um, and I, is, drink. It still, is it actually called, is it called Bang Energy? Because that's really misleading. Yeah, it, it just says bang, bang really big on the outside. I thought it was getting something different. So, um, so okay, Bang Energy. Bang Energy has a booth. Bang Energy uh, like mark exclusively through like Instagram models. Like they just like they get hot mm -hmm. girls on Instagram to so, like post in bikinis if they can. Um, and they did not change this marketing strategy for E three whatsoever. <laughs> like, not gonna adapt the marketing for the venue. They're gonna make the venue accept the marketing. So they have this huge like. Bonnaroo style fucking music festival stage set up with the <laughs> DJ and he's just fucking bumping like tunes man just bumping EDM like bumping like hip hop just like crazy like remixes and stuff they got a hype man he's walking around with this microphone he's like are you excited for bang energy and then there's like all these girls like dressed in like you know like let's call it sports attire uh -huh. um, dancing uh -huh. around dancing around dancing around on stage and stuff and it's like we got rid of booth babes a long time ago like the industry moved on from that and yeah. like they're just like we are right back in 03 baby <laughs> like and it's just like it so much not the energy <laughs> what did what? they call them oh god like what, what? did they call the like instead of yeah, what do you call babe? them that are not booth babes Bang babes? Know, like, is that what they're called? <laughs> we just don't. We don't have them anymore, though. You know what I mean? Like we right. don't use scantily clad women to sell video games anymore. We let games speak for themselves. But Bang Energy, they got to keep on brand, man. They just got to get a bunch of hot yep. girls to wear little clothes and like try and like give you swag. And like it was just so off brand for like the vibe of E3 to have this fucking EDM booth in the corner. Just they're like right next to the fucking Lego booth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just like. With girls dancing on stage and throwing out like shirts and hats and stuff, and then, and like it was so weird because there was like five people like gathered around at any given time. <laughs> people were just like really like I don't know what this is. I feel pervy standing here. I think I was gonna keep walking. Um, <laughs> and so they um, they were also giving out cans of Bang Energy, and so I, I took one and like I was looking at the label and stuff, and I think a lot of people took these expecting them to be like a Red Bull or a monster energy or something of that nature. Right. Um, and they're just like, oh, cool. I'm tired of me three. Let me take this energy drink yeah. and like pick up a little bit. No, that is not. Bang energy is a pre-workout. It says on the top in big letters, extra creatine. Oh, no. It's like, do you, guys, do you guys know what creatine is? It's like a grainy, it's like protein powder, right? 
Sort of. No, not exactly. I assume a lot of people going to E3 don't know what creatine is uh-huh. or like think it's like some kind of protein. It's not. It's a pre-workout. You take it yeah. and like it helps, gives you more energy for working out, but it's very specific. It's not like caffeine or something like that. It's very specific to working out. You take it and then you have to like expel that energy by like doing a workout or going on a run in something. And or else you will violently push. shit yourself? Uh, sort of. I mean like... <laughs> If you, just don't work, cool. <laughs> if you don't expel that energy, it feels like there's bugs crawling underneath your skin. It makes you incredibly jittery. Oh like you're just so like, it's cocaine. Like, yes, it feels like <laughs> it, it feels like what I have read about what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if you like do crack or some shit and there's this like the come down from it where like you're there's like bugs crawling off your skin you're super jittery you're shivering like you're like really like antsy like trying to shake off this feeling and so all these like people who probably like are not big like gym but gym guys like oh, yeah. are taking taking this drink <laughs> thinking they're taking a red bull and not understanding why later on it feels like they just smoked some meth yeah it's like, like a workout supplement that is yeah, exactly. awesome <laughs> That is so, amazing. Like, I see a dude it. like scratching his gums at the end of the <laughs> fucking Luigi's Mansion booth. They're over there like, like itching the side of their neck, asking for a yeah. little more bang. <laughs> <laughs> like I drank it, but I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking good. here comes the ants. But like everyone else, it's like they are <laughs> like, what did I do? <laughs> What's going on? Here comes it's the like, ants. <laughs> is the name of this episode now that's so good <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ that's so bizarre I'm a big so fan of what's happening energy. there oh dude I've gone off Christ. that bang bro <laughs> I'm coming down from bang <laughs> sorry I have mad bang energy and now it's fucking burning out I got the bang itch <laughs> it's, like, it's too Christ. much oh man that was with my friend and um like uh we were just we were just making jokes all day, like it actually like, bump into somebody because it's like crowd of hallways, and like after like he would just be talking to me, but he'd be like, "Yo, dude, I was about to fucking kill that man. Like I'm gone off this bang right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't even my fault. I just gotta get his energy out, man. Like he crossed me. Like that man, lucky I let him live. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Gone nice. on that bang. Jesus. Yeah. I wanna, so, what you need to do is take a bunch of bang and then go to that rock wall. <laughs> and, just, and then just fucking sprint through Luigi's Mansion and punch everybody that's dressed like a ghost. Alright, so we're gonna hook up your harness. No, I'm good, bro. You just walk no, straight up bro. the fucking wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, get to, you get to the top, instead of dropping down, you climb back down and you... It's like, bro, not right now, I'm off this bang. I'm like, how? Oh. So I'm fucking banging right now, dog. You just jump to <laughs> the... <laughs> like you Luigi... Right now, man, like, yeah. you, you jump over to the Luigi's Mansion set. Yeah. Yo, I'm about uh, to make my own Gooigi if these booth babes keep touching me. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's, uh, that's real good. It's so weird. Oh, God damn. I, I wish they were handing out, like, uh, I, I, like, I wish more people would go to, like, weird supplements that are not fitting in here. Like, <laughs> Two things that just don't fit in at all. Yeah, like, just, like, start handing out, like, well, I, I, I want to say, like, uh, natural male herbal enhancements but like that <laughs> probably is needed like balding like balding uh, like anti-balding cream that probably is needed i thought uh, you were like, gonna go the route of like here have a frisbee do you have a moment to talk fine. about home insurance like yeah, home like, insurance yeah i put a fucking state farm booth at the end <laughs> yeah or like like trojan condoms has a booth and it's like the trojan no. man walking around just like Unneeded. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this whole building is essentially a giant condom for all of us. He's flying around the booth on like a wire. Like just raining <laughs> rubbers down on people. <laughs> You're gonna need this later. <laughs> right over the bang booth. That makes sense. Yeah, and then you wear it to go over to like buy food, so you just have like five condoms, one on each of your fingers. <laughs> Yeah, it's Unfortunately, like, uh, these were the lubed up ones, so it's gonna be kind of slippery <laughs> to hang on to this fucking. But they taste like strawberries, so it's fine. Burger. Yeah. Well, I, like his, I like if uh, if E three's toned down again next year. If more companies leave, I like this idea of just like like random companies like insurance or like well, fuck it, let's like, get like uh, we can get a booth for like uh, it's like quarter of the price what we normally pay for a weekend if we just have a bunch of nerd ass gamers in here. Yeah. <laughs> let's just get uh get Army Hammer in there, so, uh, hawking some bacon soda. Sure, uh-huh. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. Cool. You can play Mortal Kombat there. 
Yeah, like um, May, what is it, Maytag <laughs> that does the uh, fucking like washing machine, like uh, clothes washers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, washers and dryers. It's like, hey, you, uh, you look like you haven't done your laundry in a few months. <laughs> this yeah, half of it's just the Best Buy. <laughs> Man, this is a Best Buy. <laughs> yeah. What kind of game are you guys selling? Oh, whatever, you know, TVs, micro, microwaves. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. Harsher. It doesn't matter. You can play Skyrim on all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The touchscreen Samsung fridges with Skyrim on them. Yeah. Oh man. Jesus so, Christ. Tesla's gonna that's be pretty cool though. Next year. Yep. Seventy three. Yeah. So cool. I, I mean, I do. I, I've definitely heard from like industry people that they see like they were like, yeah, this the actual show floor was like really really small. They could see more people doing like uh, digital like press events yeah, uh, kind of like nintendo and kind of like man, nintendo I, and devolver do devolver i hope do. not yeah, yeah I, I mean it, it's probably just because sony didn't really have anything to show off that they pulled out right because i mean it is a big expense right. um i don't know i mean it's really hard to argue like is it do, what kind of extra sales do you get by having a cool presence on the stage for any yeah. i mean it, it's hard to say like um, marketing is really yeah. tough. Like it's really hard to measure marketing like that, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I do wonder that. I do wonder how much goes into sales and stuff. But um, I mean, I think yeah, I think just they're like where they're at in their cycles right now. They could show up and they could show you Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part Two, and Death Stranding again, and like everyone would bitch. Or we can just like you know skip this year, just chill out. Um, yeah, yeah. Just take, a, like, take a down year. We're gonna see something from them at what they usually do something for Paris Games Week. Yeah, yeah I they definitely usually do expect, something. Um, yeah, I end of year. I definitely expect there will be a Paris Games Week or Gamescom press conference uh, because I think they're going to want to do a uh, showing for Ghost of Tsushima where they release the release date. And I think they're going to have, I think Rocksteady's next games is probably going to be presented at their press event. Okay. Um, oh, and maybe, cool. and like if it's at Paris Games Week or Gamescom, there'd probably be like less, you know, there's less pressure to like really show up. And so they can maybe even temper expectations beforehand. Like, look, right. we're yeah, showing yeah. like, Two of our first party things, maybe they announced like whatever Blue Point's been working on, or they announced like some other smaller like first party like or second party games that they got cooking, but like really tone it down. We like we're mostly just showing like third party stuff. Like it's the end of the generation. This is our end of generation press conference. We're yeah. getting all the everything we still have left in this gen is just gonna be at this event. Uh tune in for PSX in December where we reveal mm-hmm. PS5. So right, so I yeah, thought they were I mean, done up with PSX now. No, they just took a year off, just like E3. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it is interesting because, like, you know, I, I've already definitely heard people complaining that's like, oh, dude, it's too soon for the new Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, I mean, it's been a while. It's been a it's while. It's been like a regular uh, software or you know hardware life cycle. But yeah, uh, yeah, the winter the, uh, of next year, like, we'll be ready. Yeah, and I, I've also heard some people saying, like, which is just totally, like, baffling to me, that it's like, well, you know, I'm more interested to just see what comes of the new systems. Like, there's probably not going to be anything good until then. It's like, dude, Last of Us, mm-hmm. we got fucking... Um, Ghost? Death Stranding? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, uh, the original Last of Us was a PS3 end-of-life title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, uh, let's see, we had um, uh, Grand Theft Auto V yep. was an end-of-life title. Yeah. I mean, there's there's still chance for really really good stuff to come out. And oh yeah, like I said, the first better, half of next year is the best. Be yeah. Ported to the next generation pretty quickly or playable pretty quickly. Oh, yeah, right, so I'm actually all hoping going for backwards. Yeah. Right, I'm hoping we don't get a whole lot of like ports and remasters and stuff. Like, just mm-hmm. you know, just let me pop. I mean, I, don't make don't ask me to buy God of War again. Just let me. That's a great way to make money at this point. Yeah, I know, but. I mean, especially like Square Enix just said, "Hey, we're going to try to make our entire catalog available." Well, that'd, be like cool. new that'd be cool. New I mean, there's there's games there's games that they have that haven't been years yeah. and years and years. Like, I mean, when eight, I buy right? fun, what the remake of, or the uh, remaster of eight was huge because they haven't right, touched yeah. Final Fantasy eight in a long time. So yeah, they like lost um, the code or something. Um, there's like yeah. a reason why that one took a while. Yeah, but they used like, to when you hit gold, they used to just throw the master away. Right. Yeah. Because it's like, like, like the games out. Yeah. Like why, why are we gonna need it's this like, for later? Uh, you guys are like we got we gotta make hard drive space. Like I don't know, just delete Final Fantasy VIII. Like we finished yeah, that like six months ago. Just, just delete, <laughs> delete Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VIII. Just completely. delete this game we've been working on for fucking four years. <laughs> it's already printed on disc. So I don't know why we need to keep this. Yeah. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Bold. 
Well, our hard drive space is running out. Delete the 1.5 gigs that Final Fantasy VIII takes up. That'll free up space for days. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, so, wow. But, so, uh, I, I do question, yeah, of course, what will next year be like? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, dude, next year's going to be huge. It's, that's next gen E3, man. We're, we're talking yeah. all the launch titles where we're in hands on with those consoles. Like, it's going to be next year's E3 is going to probably be the biggest one in years. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I do see, like, uh, next year's definitely going to be a turning point. Um, but E3 has kind of steadily been getting smaller, I think. Um, and we, we had like uh, almost all of the press events. Uh, so Microsoft did really well, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Ubisoft did pretty decent, can, cool. just considering what they're working with. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, right you now. know, uh, Nintendo did great. A lot of other people just called their E3 off. So, you know, Sony, EA. Squares was uh, pretty, pretty okay. I like the way it was, okay. I like the way it was presented. But there was a lot of like people that went out of their way to have a show that was really phoned in. Like Bethesda's was so like they had a couple of little like cool little sneak peeks of stuff, but no gameplay. And then a couple of expansion announcements, and it's like, why do you guys have to have a show for this? Yeah, I mean, the, like a lot of people should on the Sony thing and just been like, we just got nothing to show this year. Yeah, we have um, nothing crazy. We'll we'll release a couple of videos of what we've got yeah. during that time, and we might have something on the floor, but that's it. Yeah, like, but I mean, I think, I mean, uh, Nintendo and Square Enix held the C3 on their backs. Like, everyone else, like, showed up and didn't even play the game. Well, I mean, Microsoft um, really killed it, I think. Microsoft did a great job. But well. how were they on the floor? Their show was good. I don't, I they don't weren't know. On, they, don't, they, don't, they don't go to the floor. They have a separate event at Microsoft Theater, yeah. Um, yeah. which I, I will not wait in a line. I will not wait in a separate line again to a different building. Like, sorry, Microsoft, right. I'm, not, I'm not checking right. it out. Like, you made it too hard for me to get over there. I tried, mm. and, like, the line was, like, an hour to get in, and I'm like, now just to walk into a different building like yeah, I agree with you. so E3. so how, how do they break down i i know there's obviously industry and um industry and then general uh but where would something like like if we went for media where would that fall would that fall under industry your industry yeah okay um so press uh like uh in, industry employees such as like you know designers artists uh producers and stuff um and like preferred passes which is like i don't know like i saw like khaled like the you know the singer khaled like he was just chilling uh, i don't know about the singer oh okay yeah, yeah i thought you were thinking dj khaled no i wish dj khaled <laughs> but yeah no khaled, yeah, khaled's khaled, really good like khaled was walking around and like i'm, I'm sure like I, I he just had like a probably a preferred pass like you just like yeah. you just get passes for you know well, who you are yeah he's like essentially an influencer the right? one thing that, right. that bummed me out about not being there this year is uh jack black was wandering around there Yep. And oh, yeah. that would be amazing. Sorry, guys. No games this week. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Jack Black's probably... I think he's there every year. Yeah. Oh, really? Nice. So, yeah, well, he's, I, got, I, uh, he's got a show now. Yeah, he's got a show now. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. all... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's not video games, but... <laughs> right, he doesn't play games at all. Yeah, that's the whole joke, yeah. Hilarious. It's real good. Yeah. He, he does play yeah. games, but they're not, like... Like, he'll go to, like, an arcade. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he'll okay. be like, oh, there was an arcade. I went to go get my hair cut, and there was an arcade across the street. So here we are for an hour. <laughs> and so. he's always doing dumb shit so that's fun but um nice. but yeah i um i do have to actually get going guys sure. um am i am i missing anything or is the podcast wrapping up no we're gonna go we'll go ahead and wrap up you can go ahead and break off uh we appreciate you for uh you know hanging out coming over chatting with us about uh e3 2019 um yeah i had yeah. a great time i yeah i'm really excited for the next mm-hmm. or a die to me like because I had so much to get through. A lot of this was just me like talking to you and then like a couple minutes of responses. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I, I just, I had a lot to say and I knew we only had, you know, I only had until 11 o'clock West coast time to, uh, to get through it. So I just kind of want to try and steamroll through that. But uh, yeah, next time I'm on more, more excited just to have more like open dialogues. Like we kind of had in this last 30 minutes about just like, you know, game stuff in general, but uh, yeah. yeah, I hope that you're, listeners learn something uh i know there's been a lot of e3 coverage since the show happened of course so mm-hmm. you know some of this might be redundant information but uh hopefully there's like one or two cool things that like you know they didn't know about that i was able to enlighten them on so oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure um but cool yeah thanks for hanging out uh you know you can always follow uh you can always follow drake on twitter just you know if you're following us on twitter there's definitely a a tweet or two out there with his information yes. on it and so, um, you 
can also follow me on uh, Instagram at Drake Cummings. And then one other thing I'd like to plug, if that's our, if you guys, yeah, yes, um, I have been uh, for the past uh, maybe six months, maybe going on uh, eight now. I've been um, uh, part of a uh, a collective of artists over here in Los Angeles called the People's Collective. Um, and uh, so I maybe a couple of years back, I had this own thing that I was doing called Dive. Uh, it was a YouTube channel and stuff that I was doing to kind of create like these game editorials and things. Mm -hmm. And it was more just like, I never really planned for that channel to go anywhere. It was just like, I wanted to like get these opinions out and I kind of wanted to like use them as like, add them to my websites, so, like, you know, potential people who are, when I'm applying a job, they can see what I think about like certain game design topics and stuff. Um, and I kind of stopped doing that just because there was just like more practical uses of my time. And it was just me adding to this YouTube channel. And so like, Never really gonna like grow super huge mm -hmm. um and uh so but recently i i found this other group of like like-minded artists who want to like really create things and like really want to like you know do a whole bunch of stuff and take like some creativity into our own hands and so we started working on some stuff and we do some reviews and things like that this is something that we did to you know kick it off just because like those were easy to produce so we reviewed like mm -hmm. um some tv shows and some movies but we've really started to delve into our own original content we did a five episode uh web series uh called just self-titled the people's collective series um that you guys can check out each episode is about 20 minutes and um it really escalates like each episode we just we got better and better if they only check out one episode i recommend checking out episode three i think that actually is our like best episode and then four and five are like a close second um but uh you know one is okay it's the shortest one it's like 12 minutes kind of just due to the characters episode two the world expands a little bit and then episode three we were like really hit the stride of the show um and it's a mockumentary series about living in los angeles and kind of like the things that we go through and stuff and like the stuff we have to do to kind of like you know make it in this town um and uh it's very much like a test season and that we're going to start shopping around uh to maybe hopefully get picked up and then we're going to do a season two eventually even if we don't get picked up so uh it, I, I recommend checking that out if you check nothing else on the channel out um uh there we uh, we also do a podcast the people's collective podcast you can find on uh apple podcast um uh podbean um and spotify uh currently those nice. are the three platforms it's on uh, and it's just a general entertainment industry podcast where we talk, we don't talk about games specifically, um, but that is an element that we cover depending on if there's news, we kind of talk about like what we've been doing in the entertainment industry and like what we've been going through and the kind of thing, projects we've been working on and like different things like that. It's all just about like living, working and living in Los Angeles yeah. in the entertainment industry. Uh, and then we also cover like entertainment news in general. So like this week, Double uh, XL, which is a hip hop magazine, just released their freshman class list, and so we're going to be discussing that. Those are like the most like the up and coming hip hop artists uh, that the magazine is focusing on for this year. Um, and so, but sometimes we talk about movies, like when you know when um, when James Gunn got rehired, like we discuss that, or like mm -hmm. uh, we talk about games, we talk about the loot box bill and things like that. So really overarching, high concept. Uh, industry stuff that I feel like anyone can jump into, understand, and hopefully enjoy, even if they're not super ingratiated and like knowledgeable of that particular industry. Mm -hmm. um, so we we uh, we we release a episode every other Wednesday, um, and uh, we're about to be recording our uh, I think thirteenth episode. So we've been we've been nice. doing it since the beginning of the year, and we've been going for a little bit. And check that podcast out. Uh, and then, lastly, anyone in your audience who was a fan of those old editorial style videos that I did about game design, um, those are coming back. I'm currently writing scripts for a whole bunch of stuff I want to do, and they're going to be similar to the old videos. But I'm also going to do a couple of new things. I'm writing a um, game design document for uh, a, a, a multiplayer mode that I want to see in The Last of Us Part Two, and I'm going to kind of like give a video presentation on like why i think that like this mechanic would work and like why i think this should be a mode that is added into the multiplayer of last of us 2 and like how it like works so i want to try and like like try to make it as game design focused as possible mm -hmm. both demonstrating my knowledge of game design so like making it uh hopefully entertaining to people who don't know quite as much about the inner workings of like how games are made and stuff and i'll have other videos like i did before where it's just like there's this cool thing in days gone i just want to talk about it it's a cool mechanic um mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll also be doing some other videos uh, at the desk in the same style, just about different things. I'm going to talk about the DCEU. I'm going to talk about what they should have done. I'm going to talk about like what, um, where they can go from here and like piecing together the original Zack Snyder vision. Uh, I'm going to do some theories I have on Titans, which is a show on DC Universe. 
So some, you know, theory videos and stuff. So like, it's just gonna be a whole bunch of different things. Those are all in the works right now. Um, but yeah, they can go check out that Instagram account, that YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully there's something in there that they can enjoy. But, uh, you know, if, uh, if you do end up going there, uh, comment to tell, you know, say that you came from Mammoth games cast. So we know, uh, you know, we, we know, we know, uh, you know, how much, how much, you know, run over we've had from that and stuff. And we can, we can shout you guys out on the podcast and stuff for, uh, for, you know, coming and supporting us. So appreciate sure. it. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, so again, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, we hope to have you back here soon. Cool. Awesome guys. I will. Do I just like hang up on this? Like, how do I? Sure. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Bye guys. I'll talk to you real soon. Later. See ya. Cool. Um, so yeah, like we said, there's a ton of ways that you can go, uh, you know, check out Drake and everything he's doing with people's collective game design and more. Um, yeah, they have a lot going on. I've been trying to keep up on it. I can't follow everything, uh, especially like 20 minute YouTube videos are killer. Yeah, <laughs> you have yeah. to have a lot of time available for that. But I definitely have been keeping up on their podcast. I'm always modern on that, so cool, cool. it's good stuff. So um, that's going to be our show this week. We didn't jump into any of the uh, games coming out as well. We didn't jump into uh, the the bit of news that we had. Uh, it's actually mm-hmm. just going to be uh, a rollover next week. We'll kind of wrap it all up. Might do a little bit of talk about, um, uh, you know, like last thoughts of things just for uh you and i next week for e3 yeah as well um you know the weekly news and the games that are coming out um so thank you guys for hanging out this week um if you get the chance head over to facebook.com backslash mammoth games inc to check out all the top news and video game stuff over there we appreciate all the uh likes comments and shares as well uh, over on Twitter at Mammoth Games Inc. Um, that's how you know when we go live and do stuff just like this. Again, uh, thanks to Drake for joining us for E3. Mm-hmm. Um, and as always, thank you guys for hanging out. I am Night Swarm. And I'm Filter Cord. Have a good one. <laughs>